Sports car fans have been coming to Lime Rock Park at Lakeville since 1957. Ground was broken in 1956. One and a half miles around, and the seven corners are challenging and a bit scary at places as well. This is the closest that IMSA racing and sports cars get to an oval, although it runs clockwise rather than anti-clockwise, making it a right-hand circuit. That means that the cars are set up for that asymmetric setup, as you, you will hear the engineers and some of the drivers say today. There's a big crowd on hand. They know their sports car racing up here, and they love it. And this has been a place where many drivers down through the years have opened their accounts with the Skip Barber Racing School with plenty of arrive and drive and sports car club events, whether it's been single manufacturers like Porsche or even latterly Mini who have come here to give people the first chance, the first taste of racing. Just a short lap and so you get a good chance to rinse and repeat and have a go at all of these corners in a relatively short time. Two hours and 40 minutes on the clock, 18 cars in two classes, and we're racing next live here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Jeremy Shaw is alongside me, John Hindorf, in the IMSA broadcast booth. It's a Corvette on pole position after a stunning lap, Jeremy, by Antonio Garcia. The Spaniard breaking 50 seconds. Three cars under the 50-second barrier in a GT race. Ridiculous to think about it, really, the, the pace of these cars. And that lap that he laid down this morning, absolutely stunning to get the pole position. Uh, he... Uh, he had to wring that car's neck, but uh, remarkable to me just how com how competitive the field is. Seven different races this season, seven different pole sitters. Uh, can Garcia hold on and win the race and uh, you, you know, and and close in on the championship? He comes into this weekend just six points uh, behind Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe, who lead for Ford. So once again, it's that classic Ford versus Chevrolet battle. Yeah, nothing better than that down through the history of sports car racing. Shea Adam is our Continental Tire pit lane reporter, and Shea in GT Daytona, a two-way fight has now become a three-way fight in terms of the championship, but it's a first pull for a very long time for Porsche and for Pat Long for Wright Motorsports. It's going to be a 10-way fight today, John. we got 10 cars in the class, and realistically, any of them can be on the podium. Any of them can win, but... As long as that 58 Wright Motorsports Porsche, especially with Patrick Long behind the wheel, if he hands it over to Christina Nielsen in the lead, it will be very hard to pass. And then you put Pat Long in for the final stint again. It's going to be something worth watching. If you can get a seat somewhere in the world, you're not going to be using very much of it. Christina is smiling more this weekend than I've seen in a very long time. And for GTD, it really is an open competition. But that white and red Porsche has not won yet this year it's looking pretty good for today the two major championship contenders we've been talking about here right throughout the season the 48 paul miller racing lamborghini brian sellers will start that car from fourth position they had a bit of a shock earlier on in the week and they've had to hustle to get that car even into the race they had an explosive start to the race it's fair to say as we get some engines fired up here and uh just wondering why the Porsche hasn't fired up yet. Just right across from me or the Corvette. There we go. Now we got some background noise. The uh, Paul Miller Racing guys, engine failure, comprehensive, practice one. They missed all of practice two. It was back out off the hijacks well before the halfway point of practice three. The car fully repaired. And talking to Brian Sellers in the countdown to green, he said, we got a beast to play with. So that car, that Lamborghini, which sat on pole here one year ago today, a lot of pressure on the Paul Miller Racing Organization. They've got a lot of guests here this weekend they need to perform they will and watch that lamborghini because it will not be in fourth place for very long uh, it's going to climb the charts uh, eighth position start for Catherine leg in the 86 acura now confirmed for the whole of the season that's the other car we've been talking about but don't count out 10th position starter in gt daytona ben keating coming off a win and that win at CTMP, a Canadian Time Motorsport Park, Jeremy, with Jerome Blake and Molan, has catapulted them into third position 
and just what 13 14 points away from the top of the championship in GTD yeah that's right 14 points and uh, just Catherine Legg she didn't do didn't get the best out of the car in qualifying, but uh, when, the, when the team left here last night before qualifying, they, think they thought they were in really, really good shape. They didn't expect to qualify that far down the field in GTD, but they do believe they've got a good consistent car that will look after its tires, and that is gonna be what could be the di spell the difference for all of these teams this afternoon, looking after the tires, being consistent. Now, uh, Shea Adam, I can only see a part of the pit lane, our Continental Tire pit lane reporter. You can see it all. Has everybody got away? It's empty for <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that Shea loves it empty now. It won't be empty later on, and she'll be very busy and very breathless as she's our eyes and ears down in the pit lane. We're bringing together a huge motorsport audience around the world, both here at Lime Rock Park, across the US in audio on XM Sirius, and of course around the world with streaming video on IMSA.TV and the IMSA app, as well as the audio and video player at RadioLeMond.com. Wherever you are, whether you're here trackside enjoying this beautiful Connecticut weather this Saturday or further afield, just after eight o'clock in the UK, just after nine in Central Europe. If you've been out enjoying the fabulous weather that we're having in Europe at the moment, settling down for this one, your timing is impeccable. And Jeremy, one of the great things about this weekend and this racetrack is we honestly don't know what's gonna happen in the next two hours and 40 minutes. No, I and mean, we've already had a, a magnificent uh, Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race earlier on this afternoon, in, by the way, in which history was made with a paralysed driver, Michael Johnson, coming home with the victory along with Stephen Simpson. There's a heck of a story. And uh, who knows what's going to happen this afternoon. We could see more history made. Corvette Racing, two years ago, they scored their 100th win as a team right here at Lime Rock Park. This is the 50th GTD race since the formation of the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in 2014 and uh, the team for Corvette Racing looking for its 100th win on American soil. Yeah, absolutely, and it would be, there'd be some kind of symmetry if that happened here this weekend. They've put themselves in the best position with that awesome lap. History already been made with qualifying records, not just broken, not just shaved a little bit. It's like we've taken them up to 30,000 feet and thrown them at the ground, rocket powered. They are shattered in both GT Le Mans and GT Daytona. Settle yourself in, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, and get yourself comfy. Time to take a deep breath now, because you might not have a chance for another one for the next better part of two hours and 40 minutes. Pit stop strategy, Jeremy, that's going to be key here. Our Porsche keys to the race. When do you get your pit stops in? And you've got to execute them. Yeah, it'll be two pit stops uh, for, for both categories. The GTD cars, they can do a bit over an hour, maybe 65 minutes or so before making a stop. The GTLM cars, eh, around about an hour, uh, perhaps a little bit less, so that'll be, that'll be interesting, but it'll be two stops for sure, uh, unless uh, any caution periods come at, di at uh, inopportune times. We say. have seen GT Le Mans cars trying to go the distance here on just one stop and not quite making it sometimes as well. This is an abrasive track. It takes it out of the Michelin tyres for GT Le Mans and the Continental tyres for GT Daytona. So tyre strategy here, it is a right-handed circuit. We have seen in the past sort of stock car style, left-hand tyre changes only because those are the tyres that get worked hardest. Yeah, absolutely, John. I'm sure we're going to see that this afternoon. The question is, are they all going to do that or some of them going to do that? And uh, with that, we'll, we'll only find out over the course of the next two hours and 40 minutes. And that, the reason that you would take only two tyres is for track position, which here is absolutely key. Plus, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yes, because it saves a lot of time during the pit stops. So there's only uh, two air guns allowed uh, over the wall. So if you're just changing two, uh, uh, two tyres on the car, you just you know, they don't have to go around and do the other side of the car or, or the front or the rear, depending on which way you want to do it. So it could be a lot quicker, lots a big time saving just two tyre changes. From Continental Tyre, our friends there telling us it's 76 degrees Fahrenheit in the air, 88 on the track. This is temperate, this is lovely. This is a great day to go racing. Two hours and 40 minutes on the clock. The BMW safety car peels off into the pit lane. Antonio Garcia and Lawrence Van Tour are almost side by side, coming through the final right-hander at the downhill. Everybody coming up behind them. Nine rows of two cars, green flag in the air, and we are racing. And Garcia gets a great jump 
as he crosses the start finish line two three Carlet up the outside comes the second of the yellow Corvette almost making a move there and that was Tom Milner and he's got up into third position a little bit of a tardy start by Dirk Muller who had to defend there in the first of the two red white and blue Fords in the mix there, the black BMW, that's the number 24 car, that's a fabulous start from John Edwards who started down in sixth position and has pushed his way through there. I'm not going to say it's a renaissance for BMW but certainly they have been closer to the front in time and in position than we've seen them all season. Yeah, they didn't show any qualifying, haven't really shown it in practice but we're going to see whether they've been holding their, their cards a little bit close to their chest with this weekend. They've had a little bit of a bounce from performance change to their advantage coming into Lime Rock Park. Let's see whether that does make a difference. Already the first lap is completed, the big rumble of the Corvette down to the end of the straight. And it's a problem early on for an Acura, and it's the 93 car. Rear suspension damage, front damage to the left-hand side, so it's left-hand side contact there for the number 93. This is Lawson Aschenbach. And he's going to go a lap down straight away. You have any problem here, you go a lap down. But he is going to get that car back to the pit lane at the front of the field. Number three Corvette Garcia from Lawrence Vanto. Yeah, oh, the other car say... that's missing is the BMW of Turner yeah. Motorsport. Yeah. I was just going to say that Bill Oblin hasn't come around either. It's, uh... The pits are close, full course yellow. Lawson Aschenbach made it in, but he'll go behind the wall. Full course yellow for Bill Oberlin at the uphill. Now we are using the chicane here. So Bill Oberlin is in the chicane area with a very badly damaged BMW. Oh, right front wheel is not attached to the rest of the car or the suspension. And that's gonna need some kind of flat tow. And Bill, I think a little, uh, a little ambitious to think he could get that back. Oh! Aschenbach was already off the circuit, going on to No Name Straight and coming back on is where he collected the Turner BMW. So there'd been a bit of jiggery pokery and a schmozzle even before Bill Oberlin arrived at the scene. I think so. I think Bill was completely the innocent victim there. He was just uh, minding his own business, you know, taking a defensive line into the corner. That's absolutely fine. But the, the uh, number 86 Acura just came from, from nowhere and. Uh, clattered into the side of his car and then took out that uh, right front corner. Bill's fine, he's out of the car, the IMSA intervention vehicle. Maybe the two, I mean, the two Acuras are behind it. Did they get together? No, Catherine was, went through, that yes. wasn't. Yes, but had they got together? Because they were, be, they were behind Bill Oberlin. Uh, basically what happened there was Lawson went straight on up the uphill, I think, that was what happened. He should have been turning right and got tipped by somebody, was it the 86 car? I'm not sure about that from what we've been able to see. But Lawson Aschenbach behind the wall and an awful start for MSR. Catherine Leg still running. Let me give you the rundown. Antonio Garcia from Paul held on to that pole position after a stalwart challenge from Lawrence Van Tour. The pits are closed, it will be a short yellow because it's so close to the start of the race. So no pass around, no pits opening just clear up and get back to racing. Third position, making up positions, Tom Milner in the number four Chevy Corvette, then the 66-4, Dirk Muller up from sixth position. He got a very good start, but uh, it was uh, Jonathan Edwards who had the best start from sixth, rather. He made up a couple of positions as well. Yeah, Aschenbach was off the circuit on his own to the right-hand side and yes, careened back on. Um, he certainly wasn't his teammate that was the problem. He got tipped. Yep. Actually, ironically, he got tipped by Bill Oberlin in the first place that pushed him off the track. And then coming back on, he hit Bill Oberlin for a second time. So yeah, he kind of lost control. He, he yes, was, he, on the grass. He, yeah, exactly. It was so Lawson actually not the uh, not the guilty party there. Yeah, Onto the really grass. Unfortunate. God, I'll tell you what, T. Justin Marks and Lawson Aschenbach have had very little good fortune this season. They've had some good results, but not much has really gone their way, and that's just a, a really sad end to what was looking like a pretty promising afternoon because they, they felt that within that team their cars were super consistent. They were looking forward to the race. Lawson Aschenbach rather pragmatically standing at the left front of his now rather second hand looking. Acura NSX, which the MSR guys are looking at somewhat ruefully. Yeah. It will be a short yellow once that BMW has been pulled out of the way. And we will get back to racing 
We've lost 10 minutes already of the two hours and 40. Now, this has sent everybody on the pit lane into overdrive with their spreadsheets. Uh, they are now calculating fuel numbers rapidly as to what this does to the pit stops. And oh, if we save fuel from now, can we get to the end with just one pit stop? I tell you, I'll guarantee, Jeremy, one of the Fords tries to go on one pit stop. And I'm going to say that's going to be the 67 with Richard Westbrook. Because I did see the pink fluffy slippers uh, that was next to the Ford when Westy was about to get in. The man is a beast for saving fuel. I've not seen anybody be able to do it any better. And bear in mind, we had people... Uh, like Scott Dixon driving for Ford in this championship in the past. It was just a tiny little touch from Bill Oberlin. Uh, he was just basically holding his line, Lawson on the grass, and at that point, Lawson's pretty much a, a passenger coming yeah, into the I'm uphill I'm not sure chicken. whether there was a touch, but certainly they... Um, I think there was just a touch right. left front to right rear. Possibly, and then Ashenbach kind of reacted to that, and it that sent him off the road, and he was just trying to regain control of the car at that stage. Don't break, don't break, and, don't uh, break, don't break. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he couldn't break on the grass. Correct. And uh, and then uh, you know, he came back on the track and into the side. The, the stewards are looking at it, uh, and it's under review at the moment, but the fact First of the matter is incident. both cars are effectively out of the race. First lap incident, isn't yeah. it? It's and also, by the way, in, in GTD, the two Lexuses is, 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 is changed positions on that first lap. So Jack Hawks was the car number 15 ahead of Dominic Bauman in the number 14 car for second and third in the category. <sighs> yeah, that was unfortunate. Dear me. We didn't want to see. No, absolutely not. The safety car lights are still on. Pit lane will not open. So that takes a little bit of the strategy out because we have, we're getting up to nine minutes. Once we get the 10 minutes, of course, you've done your driver time. But the, the strategy won't be coming into play there because the pits will not open. This is what's called a short yellow. So close to the start of the race or to a previous yellow, the race director has it at his discretion to call a short yellow, which he has done. And the BMW is on the flatbed at the top of the uphill. And it won't be too long before we're back to racing, Jeremy. No, but uh, oh, what a disaster for that Turner Motorsport team. This is one of their home races. They've had a lot of success here in the past. But uh, unfortunately, there's going to be no more this weekend. No, indeed. So a couple of DNFs after a win for that team. And they will be disappointed in the extreme. Looks like we are getting set once the uh, emergency vehicles get out of the way. We're going to be down to about two hours and 30 minutes to yeah. go. Yeah, and uh, particularly disappointing, of course, uh, for uh, Robbie Foley because uh, he came into this weekend well, it was his birthday yesterday, number one, his 22nd birthday. He's from Randolph, New Jersey, so which is not a million miles away from here. So, unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to drive in qualifying because Bill did that, and he's not going to get a chance to drive in the race, most likely, either. So, what a shame for Robbie Foley. A lot of supporters here, I'm, I'm sure he has this weekend. The fickle nature of motorsport. Yeah. A couple of races ago, the guys were on top of the world after winning. And now, two straight non-finishers. What a shame for the guys. That car into the pit lane, which means we have a clear circuit into the pit lane, though, on the back of a flatbed truck. IMSA Radio and TV live from trackside. Shea Adam, our Continental Tower pit lane reporter, along with Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindoff, watching the action, which has been paused for a moment for our first full course caution of the weekend for the WeatherTech series. We actually managed to go through all of Friday without having any interruption. And then about five minutes into this morning's warm up for WeatherTech, had a red flag for Patrick Pele going into the tyres at Big Bend. Couple of full course yellows in the Continental race. Hope you were with us for our live sound and vision coverage of that. Shea Adam watching down in the pit lane and has the pink, pink fluffy slippers from uh, Richard. This is our little joke, of course. We talk about this. What we're seeing is he's got very soft feet 
and he's very soft on the pebble pedals. The pink fluffy slip has been deployed yet? Uh, yes, they were deployed on the pace lap well <laughs> before he started the race. He was backed up, uh, backing up John Edwards, and John was getting frustrated because Richard was so far behind the safety car. He wasn't going to use any additional fuel than he needed to. And guess what he's doing right now? He's got quite a big gap to the car ahead of him because they are doing their warm-up sequence. They're getting on the gas hard and then trying to get heat back in the brakes. Richard, having no part of that. He's uh, just sitting calmly and waiting for the rest of the train to come back to his speed. He'll be at the highest gear possible. He'll be letting it tick over. And the safety car... The safety car is clearing out. Which will leave the field under the control of the pole sitter and still leader, Tonio Garcia, who puts his foot down well before he comes to the final corner just as he came out from underneath the Continental Tire Bridge. And we are back to green flag racing. Two hours and 29 minutes on the clock as Garcia crossed the line. He gets a good jump on Van in the 912 Porsche. Further back down the field. Looks like Ben Keating was trying to have a go on John Potter there as they went into turn one as they battle at the back of the GTD field. Still led by Pat Long, the 58 red and white bright racing Porsche, right motorsport Porsche, Jack Hawksmith, Dominic Bauman, the 15 and the 14 Lexus in behind. But it's the two Corvettes who are the bread and the meat in the sandwich is the Porsche of Lawrence Van Tour. Then in fourth position, Dirk Muller, the 96 handed a penalty. Uh, academic, but an important message being sent by race control. Incident responsibility. There will be a drive through for the 96 car if it returns to the track. And if I'm seeing that, that's on the bottom of the timing screen. That means all of the other teams are seeing that. So that's been quite clearly a message sent from race control. But that wasn't acceptable conduct even on the first lap of the race. And that's why that it might seem strange to you that a car that's come back on a flatbed has got a penalty but it's important to send the message to everybody else as to what is and, and isn't acceptable uh, and from an overhead view from the helicopter shot we, it did appear that the uh, 96 car moved its line on that no-name straight it's a it's a, a straight that's got a couple of kinks in it so not only does it not have a name it's not really even straight <laughs> uh, and, and, no name and not that makes straight. it no name not straight and that's what makes it even more difficult so it's it's, it's a tricky decision to call that but uh, the, clearly the stewards felt that he did deviate his line as a result of that all lost nice back had to take evasive action that took him onto the grass which uh, then caused him to make contact with the number 96 car thankfully it wasn't anybody else I suppose no involved. indeed indeed although Lawrence uh, uh, Lawson Aschenbach will clearly be a bit disappointed with that he looked a bit crestfallen yeah. in the pit lane Pat Long leads in GT Daytona has already pulled out 1.3 seconds of a lead in the red, white and black cars. He goes through the only left-hander of any note and then through the right-hander onto that no-name straight. And he's got uh, a decent gap now back to Jack Hawksmith, as who Jer Jeremy said just nipped ahead of his teammate before the yellow flag in the little bit of racing that we had before the full course yellow came out at effectively the end of, of lap one. We just about got the leaders across the line before the full course yellow had to be deployed. Quick word for Cooper McNeil as well in fifth position in the WeatherTech 63 car, sitting in behind our championship leading Uda Khan, the red, grey and black, or silver and black Lamborghini. That's Brian Sellers ahead of him as he turns into the first corner, Big Bend. They've had a very interesting weekend, and that car on new tyres has been very, very quick indeed. Topped a couple of sessions, and both... Cooper McNeil and Gunnar Jeanette, who shares the driving with him this weekend, although his two previous co-drivers, Alessandro Balzan and Jeff Segal, are here as well. So a huge amount of driving talent employed by the 63 squad, but that car has been quick on new rubber this weekend. Yeah, we never got an, ex an explanation as to why there was a late change to the driver entry there for the number 63 car, but you're right, Cooper McNeil has really done an excellent job this weekend in qualifying and in practice. The car is fast and he's doing a good job with it now hanging on to that fifth position. Uh, further back, by the way, Ben Keating, having got past uh, John Potter, is uh, he's been closing in a little bit on, on Catherine Leigh. Just having a great season, Ben Keating, uh, this year. Very much a gentleman driver, wouldn't say he was anything else, but takes it very seriously. Businessman, of course, and that takes up the bulk of his time. Very successful businessman at that is Mr Keating, that loves to come and do his racing, keeps himself very fit. 
and does as much as he can to ensure his driving is up to standard and it's getting better and better with every race should just mention by the way whilst we're talking and indeed listening and watching the Ferrari number 63 we wish our best to Sergio Marchioni the man who's been for a little while now at the head of the Fiat Chrysler Ferrari group and he's had to step down from his position through to ill health and we wish him all the best a massive motorsport fan big fan of Alfa Romeo and has done an awful lot to revamp the Alfa brand in Europe and you guys have got it here in America as well now with the Giulia and the Stelvio two fantastic cars so we wish uh, Sergio Marchioni the very best for the future and I do notice one of the Agnelli family is uh, back in charge at Marinello has taken over there so that's a sort of back to the, the future or the future going back to the past if you will 2.24 to go IMSA Radio and TV live from trackside Antonio Garcia looking backwards at the bright white headlights of Lawrence Van Tour as they cross the line and head under the bridge to Big Bend. Tommy Milner just starting to put the pressure on the Porsche in second. Further back, the 24 BMW, the black car in fifth position has Richard Westbrook in the Ford number 67, the Chip Ganassi racing car, right behind it as we go down for an update from our Continental Pit Lane reporter on Audi number 44. Shea, what do you have? You might have noticed off the start, John, that uh, John Potter started to drop back a bit. Well, that's because the brakes have all of a sudden started acting up. They've gone quite soft for John, so he has backed the pace way down while the team tries to figure out what is wrong with the car, what is causing this issue, and more importantly, how they can fix it for John and the rest of his stint. Doesn't sound like it's going to get any better uh, on the as the car things like that don't tend to get better Jeremy as they go on if you start with a problem with brakes um, it's only going to get worse I'm afraid for John Potter he might have to drive around that yeah you're not wrong there unfortunately that uh, he would he would wish the uh, opposite to be true but uh, you know if he can keep up this sort of pace uh, it's good enough I think uh, most likely to that he, he might not lose a lap to everybody else as long as he, he keeps himself in, in contention on the lead lap if there is another fourth course caution that's going to give it, bring it back into overall contention Richard Westbrook biding his time at the moment behind the 24 BMW John Edwards in the black M8 GT Le Mans comes out onto the front straight using all of the rumble strip that's the battle for fifth position and they're just starting to lose touch a little with the four cars ahead again this suggests to me that perhaps they've already gone into fuel saving mode the leading Ford is the teammate car the 66 and it wouldn't be beyond the wit of man to have the Chip Ganassi racing team split the strategy here Richard Westbrook as we've mentioned is inordinately good at saving fuel and still keeping his lap times up and if they are thinking that they're going to be close to a one-stop strategy after that what 12 13 14 minutes of full course yellow then he's the man who can get them into the window for Bri for ryan briscoe to bring that car home so expect to see that 67 car now i think go very very long indeed pat long leads gt daytona for the Wright Motorsport number 58 car and he has a decent lead in GT Daytona terms almost two seconds back to Jack Hawks within the red Lexus he's got about the same gap to his teammate Dominic Bauman in the 14 car Dominic with a change of teammate this weekend David Anamar Hansen not like doesn't like this track and decided to sit this one out allowing Mario Farnbacher into the car Super Mario one of the ultimate plug and play performance accessories yes indeed and uh, just looking at the, the pace of the leaders uh, super consistency from Antonio Garcia in his last uh, three laps who've been within uh, three hundredths of a second of each other so super consistency there uh, meanwhile in fourth position number four number 66 Ford Dirk Mueller actually set the fastest lap of the race fractionally on the uh, a couple of laps ago Westbrook still tied up behind that number 24 car 
spoke to Bobby Ray Hall end of Friday's proceedings and there was cautious optimism from the greatly experienced Mr Ray Hall he said are you happy sort of said I'm not unhappy and I still need to see what everyone else has got I'm not sure we've seen everything from everyone else we assured me they'd been pushing pretty hard in the early part of the week yeah and qualifying this morning certainly showed we hadn't seen the best Indeed of everybody because so. but everybody up their pace including the bmws by a substantial margin as well at imsa radio if you want to get in touch with us can't promise to read everything out but we will keep an eye on the screen as we watch the action on the circuit ben keating up to seventh position overall and now in behind the driver with whom he is battling in the Drivers' Championship, Catherine Legg in second at the moment, and 10 points behind Catherine Legg is Ben Keating. Check that, 11 points behind Catherine Legg is Ben Keating. So this is a battle in the Championship as well as on the track at the moment. The camouflage urban grey of the 86 low-lying NSX from Acura and the mainly white Mercedes right up the tailpipes now of that car and that is the battle for 14th and 15th overall or if you prefer 6th and 7th in GTD. Meantime the top four going through Big Bend once again the laps reel off so quickly here we're already 20 laps into this race and still have 2 hours and 18 minutes to go. 66 Dirk Muller chasing down two Corvettes and a Porsche equidistant these guys at the moment almost like Jeremy the early rounds of a heavyweight boxing fight there's a bit of jabbing yeah. a bit of sparring going on what have you got I want to find out where you're strong where you're weak no big chances being taken right now by these four drivers up front uh, I think you're absolutely right uh, but they are lapping very very consistently uh, 51.3 or 51.4 all of those cars really running with each other neither is pushing as you say too hard at this stage in the race and there's still plenty of time remaining two and over two and a quarter hours to go in this race so uh, there's no point in using up all your gunpowder right now just look at the pace by the way of john potter you said you talked about the fact that it you know, rarely gets any better a brake problem well the last uh, half dozen laps he's not only stabilized the gap to the to the to the rest of the contenders in gtd he's actually reduced it by uh, about a half a second a couple of tenths of a second a lap so john potter in that number 44 magnus racing audi is running good pace at the moment yeah he's learning how to deal with it Indeed. he'll be lifting and coasting a bit if he's got a brake pedal that isn't really playing with him you've got to be very careful because you do there's a few places here where you don't want it to go all the way at the floor he'll be tapping the brake pedal coming into the uphill chicane making sure he's got something of a feel there Across the start finish line first and second a little bit closer perhaps than they have been for a while and certainly third and fourth much closer as Dirk Muller begins to close in on Tom Milner in the Corvette Corvettes have been very very consistent this year very much a car that shows its pace in the race Jeremy the Corvettes, often we've seen them languishing towards the bottom of the times, but somehow they find some pace during the race and together with the legendary Corvette racing team pit stops, they manufacture their way, they grab and scrape and claw their way into contention and they're still very much in contention for the championship, the Corvettes. Certainly are. Coming into this, uh, coming into this race, Jan Magnussen and Antonio Garcia in the, uh, in the number three, number three car excuse me uh, just six points behind Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe for the championship lead in the in the manufacturers championship an eight point edge for Ford over Chevrolet and Chevrolet just one point ahead of Porsche coming into this seventh round of the, ch of the championship so another 15 minutes of racing completed now with two hours and 15 to go in GT Daytona, Pat Long leads by nearly five seconds from the Lexus of Jack Hawks with 58 from 15. The second Lexus, the blue car, the 14 in third position. There's another two seconds further back, but a bit of a queue beginning to form now. A bit of a line as Brian Sellers in the 48 Lamborghini, Coop McNeil in the white and black 
number 63, Ferrari, and Catherine Legg not too far behind, and Ben Keating right with Catherine Legg. So from Dominic Bauman all the way down to seventh place, third down to seventh, pretty much together in a long line in GT Daytona. And the leaders will be catching that relatively shortly. John Potter will go a lap down in the next lap or two. He'll be the first guy that Antonio Garcia sees. In fact, you can probably just see him now as they go up towards the chicane down No Name Straight. At the front of the field, it is Garcia leading by a second. A second between Vanto in the Porsche second and Tom Milner in the second of the Chevy Corvettes in third. Half a second further back. The first of the Fords is the 66. Then a bit of the gap. And uh, John Edwards had Richard Westbrook, Conor De Filippi and Patrick Pele pretty much line astern behind him as we complete 26 laps round this very busy, very quick circuit at Lime Rock Park. Live on Sirius XM on the IMSA app, also on IMSA TV where sound and vision is synced perfectly for our international audience. Good to have your company. Lime Rock Park looking splendid and racing just as good as it looks today for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Jeremy Shaw watching the times at the moment. Incredibly consistent laps at the front of the field. Yeah, very much so. And uh, Patrick Long also running uh, a super consistent place at the head of the GTD field and edging away from the Lexus of Jack Hawksworth. That gap is extended by, well, up until up until this lap, by uh, two or three tenths of a second a lap. It's actually stabilised that time around. But uh, he's now five seconds ahead of Hawksworth in second place. And the gap back to third, another couple of seconds. That's gone out just a little bit over the last few laps. Shea Adam telling me the first blue flags of the race are just coming out. Ben Keating right up behind the Acura NSX of Catherine Legg, and that's the battle for second and third in the GT Daytona Drivers' Championship. Chris Dyson has joined us in the IMSA broadcast booth. Hello, Chris, you were supposed to be short track racing today down in Pennsylvania somewhere, is it? Yeah, that's right, John. Um, we, uh, we were supposed to race uh, in the... Uh, USAC East Sprint Cars over in uh, Path Valley tonight, and it uh, forecast was pretty lousy, so it got rained out. I woke up today in Allentown, and I called my dad, and I asked him when the Lime Rock race was today, and he said it was at 3, so uh, was able to get home, pick him up, and here we are. Uh, it, certainly, uh, it certainly beats mowing the lawn this afternoon. This GT-only format is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's really thrilling. I mean, you, you watch this. The, the track, this track's always been built for drama, and, and you see the parody through the field, and, and uh, and actually, the, the, I think it's a testament to what um, IMS has done with the with the classes and the balance before, between all the different manufacturers. Racing's cut and thrust the whole way, and, and there's no clear clear gaps. So uh, it, it's been exciting, and it's it's great to see the hillsides here filled with people. I, I think uh, Skip Barber's done a superb job getting the crowds hey, hey. up, and it's great to be back. Do you miss this? You were a staple of, of IMSA from when I came over in the late 1990s in the ALMS years and uh, racing in. Uh, ostensibly in prototype racing. Do you miss this competition in this paddock? There's a good buzz in this paddock again now. Yeah, it's great to see. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't ever feel like I've gotten that far away from it. Um, frankly, I've got still got a lot of friends here and, and competing and, and um, you know, it, I, I never say never for coming back. And, and uh, this is this year I've been back racing pretty actively, um, just trying to keep my, my eyes open and ears open for opportunities for myself and for the team. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's great to come back and see the series so strong and, and to see um, see how hard everyone's having to work every weekend here. Well, en enjoy your, your short track racing, but we'd love to see you and your dad and Dyson racing name back in, in IMSA anytime soon. You know that it's a, an open door, I'm sure. And uh, also, the competitors who are listening will be going, oh, don't, let's not have them back. They're way too good. <laughs> More competition for us. You're very, very welcome at any time in the booth as well. Chris, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, John. Chris Dyson joining us live here, trackside. Pass four position at Big Bend. Just last time around, the 67 of Richard Westbrook. Still, I think, saving a little bit of food for fuel gets by John Edwards and makes up another position, up into fifth position now for Richard Westbrook. Westy, as he likes to be known, goes past John Potter. I suggested John would be getting lapped, he has done. And Westy now, the man who makes fuel whilst he's driving quickly. Remember, back a couple of seasons ago at Laguna Seca, when we all thought there was another pit stop that had to be done by the Ford GT, and Richard Westbrook confounded us and everybody else up and down the pit lane. Well, he's on this again. Through goes 
Patrick Peely and ahead of him, that was Conor De Filippi who are battling away in GT Le Mans. At the front of the field, Tonio Garcia in that Corvette rumbles by, nearly two seconds the gap now to the second place car of Lawrence Van Tour. And we're gonna squeeze in another guest here and this is a delight for me to say it. The first ever, half of the first ever AMG winning team in Continental Tire, Owen Trinkler, welcome back to the booth. Have, has your heart rate come down yet? Because you weren't driving at the end, you were more nervous on the on the uh, on the stand than you are behind the wheel. I was, I was uh, super nervous, uh, Hugh Plum. I brought my three closest friends here, Guy Cosmo and Ted Giovannis are up here with us also. And Hugh did a great job to finish it off. But I was uh, pacing the pit lane. Shay came down there to see me, and I was you looked like an expectant father, man. Yeah, I was. I was all over the place, and uh, I actually took the headset off there after that last restart, and just uh, knew he'd pulled the gap. And we had a really, really good car, obviously. And uh, it's just I'm so happy for this team. They did a great job. But you're a great person to ask this question. The, the track's been evolving all weekend. Everybody's been talking about how slippery, how greasy almost it feels underneath the tires. How was it in your race? How how are we getting back? to what we might have expected in a race weekend there. It's doing the same thing. I mean, it, in our race, it, obviously early in the morning for us, but uh, you had to manage the tires um, here. You've always got to do that here. We've got cooler temperatures today, but you have to go through the run and understand that you got to make it through a whole fuel run and run consistent times during that, that period. You can you could go out there and run a quick lapse, probably five or five to 10 laps, but you're going to burn the tires off of it. And uh, th that's what I worked on and just kind of rode there behind the 28 car and knew I had a great pit crew to get the lead for Hugh. Um, when we made that pit stop and then uh, he did the same thing I talked to him on the radio about that just conserving the tires in the car would uh, would be underneath it for the whole run and we just everybody did a great job today uh, you had a great second half of, of last year driving the Nissan you've come out very strongly uh, since the break for Le Mans this year what is it about these tracks in the second half of the season that you guys seem to love so much you in particular well i mean these are kind of old school tracks lime rocks that way um, I, i'm kind of an old uh, circle track guy too uh, when i started on dirt tracks and, and asphalt ovals and stuff and lime rock is like that it's like what i call the for the for the casual fan that watches maybe some nascar races this is our bristol um, it's, it's a fast track, and, and you might have to use the, the old bumper there to move some people out of the way because it's a tough, tough place to pass. I mean, we were having to work lap, lap traffic, and uh, I just like the back half of the season when we go to VIR, Road America, some of these tracks that you just don't find anymore uh, that were built a long time ago. Let's uh, have a quick word with, uh, with Ted Giovannis as well as the leaders are working their way through traffic in the moment. I'll give you a quick run down, two hours and seven minutes to go. Antonio Garcia still with 2.3 seconds on the field in the pool sitting Corvette from Lawrence Van Tur with those uh, painful hands for him at the moment. 9-1-2 in second by a second from Tom Miller in the Corvette and then the second of the four, the 66. In GTD, Pat Long by 10 seconds now. Yeah. Plongy just pulling away. He is, and the Lexus, so uh, it's been a, a factor all season long. The, the Lexus, it's, it's pretty heavy on its rear tyres, and uh, particularly around this racetrack here. And indeed, Brian Sellers right with the second Lexus now. Dominic Bauman starting to struggle for grip on the rear end of that car. And Brian Sellers has brought the tyres on the 48 Lamborghini up a lot more gently and now finding some pace with Kuma McNeil in fifth position in GT Daytona and the lapping has started and now this is about respect as well as bravery. You can be too brave here and it can cause trouble for you and for everyone else. Ted Giovannis, congratulations. Uh, AMG takes its first victory and it's one of your cars in Continental Tires. Well done, mate. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. We really, uh, we really worked hard uh, to get the team to gel. We have, uh, you know, been successful at putting various people in various positions, and I think the pit stop showed because uh, the pit stop gained them a, um, a spot. Bit of a touch out on the circuit there as the BMW and the Porsche are still battling. That's Conor De Filippi and Patrick Pelia on the uphill chicane as they're trying to go by Catherine Legg in the 86 Acura sitting out in front Catherine now has been passed by Ben Keating and she's down to seventh place in class remember that is the three cars battling for the lead in the GTD championship are the 48 Lamborghini the 86 Acura and the 33 of Ben Keating the white Mercedes at Ted 
quick word before this all goes up in smoke, as it is wants to do, uh, about the, the foundation. The, the name is on the side of the cars. You're doing some great work. Right, yeah. It's the uh, Jane Koskinas Ted Giovanna's Foundation for Health and Policy. Basically, right now, we're uh, putting a lot of research money in metastatic breast cancer, and uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, find ways to, it, to improve treatments, but maybe even cure. We wish you all the best in that. How does anybody find out more? There'll be a website, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, they uh, go to jktgfoundation.org, and that's, uh, you know, uh, how to find us, and it'll tell, tell you a lot about what we're doing. Ted, well done again. I know Owen was going to join us for this race, but I want you to take him away and celebrate, because you guys really deserve it. Well yeah, done, mate. Yeah. Thanks very much. We're, we're, we're all, The whole team is happy. I'm sure you are. It is a big team effort. Nice to see Guy Cosmo up here as well, and Hugh Plum standing behind me as well thanks guys good effort great stuff really enjoyed that race earlier on today and we'll catch up with Owen later on in the season and he'll come and join us here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV go and celebrate with your team you deserve this one and I know the family will be listening back home in Nashville Hugh and uh, Owen doing a cracking job here in the Conti race and all of a sudden uh, Antonio Garcia is kind of checking out now I mean, the gap, there wasn't really wasn't much of a gap for the first 24, 25 laps. Only, OK, the first eight, nine, eight laps run under caution. But since then, he stretched out that lead now, Garcia. It's three and a half seconds or more over the number 912 car of Lawrence Van Tour. Coming down to two hours to go. Hugh Plum, the only one of the TGM team, uh, winning team we haven't spoken to. Hugh, uh, congratulations, but what a race out here. And this is danger time for all these GT Le Mans cars coming through the GTD field. You guys have exactly the same when you're coming through the ST and the uh, TCR field. I mean, where are you looking at the moment when you're doing this? You're having your own race, but you're pulling through someone else's race as well. Yeah, it's a, it's just a matter of really trying to plan ahead on what you're uh where you're going to get that guy in front of you when it's a pack of two three four cars in front of you it's just really picking your spot to be careful um you know towards the last part of our race i was in kind of just conserve mode so i didn't want to take any chances uh but there at the beginning obviously it was full full press flashing lights trying to uh just get my way through and have the second place guy behind me stuck behind him do, do, I mean, when you're trying to make up positions do you try and use the traffic uh, at Ben Keating at the moment trying to uh, get through and make up positions he's being passed by the leader of the race Catherine Legg's just gone off in, in front of him and he's had to pick his way around that as he's being passed he's got Cooper McNeil in the 63 ahead of him I mean there's a lot to take in here so much to take in and you know the the closing speeds are so are so big that uh, you know sometimes you don't have time to react, uh, and and you know it's just trying to get ahead of the car as much as you can and get ahead of the traffic in front of you and just you know pray that you made uh, a, you haven't lost a lot of time and the guy behind you has lost a lot of time. How much can the pit wall help you in these situations? You're coming up on traffic. It's so and so in the car, so you know if it's a pro driver or a gentleman driver. How much information is going backwards and forwards, and how much will these guys be being talked to at the moment? Yeah, so I think it's important for them to know uh, class uh, behind them, position. How much are you are you are you gaining them? Uh, how much time are you are you losing? Uh, that's what I like to know. I like to know, you know, you've got a two-second lead, or mm. just so every lap you're you're well informed. O obviously, out in front of you, you can see that. So just judging what's behind you and what's happening. A, a good day for TGM. A good day for the Plum family. So family in every sense of the word. Your brother was on the podium as well for 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 McLaren. Big celebration tonight. Big time. My boys at TGM. I'm so proud of them. Ted Giovannis. Uh, the guy is a mastermind at putting all the right people together to uh, now get Mercedes GT4 first win in North America. I think that's something he can ha hang his hat on and uh, unbelievable job with the foundation that he's doing. So we're all we're all really proud for him. First of many. Yes. Sir. First of many. Thank get you. the monkey off the back. Go and enjoy. Yeah. I suggest there may be some adult beverages in your near future, gentlemen. Thank you, Ted. Guy, always a pleasure, mate. And Hugh, I'll, I'll, see, I'll see you coming into the track next weekend as well, huh? 
<laughs> yes, that was Jeremy Shaw, which you could look charm this morning. We chatted on the way over yesterday morning, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to make sure that happens every lap. Battle on the track now, the 15 of Jack Hawksworth has Brian Sellers behind and Brian has wiggled his way past Dominic Bauman, who I suggested was struggling with a bit of grip as we're coming through to what now? About 30 minutes, a little bit less of actual racing because we had quite a lot of yellow flag early on, Jeremy, and all of a sudden, the Huracan is coming to life as the Lexus is struggling. Indeed so, and uh, Brian has closed that gap in no time at all. I mean, he got past him, uh, he got past the 14 car on lap 37. The gap was better part of two seconds within uh, two laps. He was right with number 15 car. Now he's got to find a way past that. Meanwhile, this uh, hats off here to John Potter also. That gap from, uh, from him to the rest of the field in GTD was 10 seconds. It's now four and a half. He's really done a good job to close that gap. Sellers having a big dive up the inside at the West Bend and decided better of it. That's the championship leader, don't forget. He wants to get through. It looks to me as if the Lexus is coming into the pit lane. Shea Adam is our continental time pit lane reporter. He is, and this was planned from before that battle started shaping up because the Lexus crew up on the wall. It will not be a driver change as of yet. Minimum time has not yet been met, so they have no point in doing that, but they are doing a four tire change and giving Jack a lot more fuel. So this is the first car to jump. The first team to go off strategy is the 15 Lexus. Keep an eye on that red one. All going smoothly on their change so far. They've got two tires on the car, now they got all four new ones on. Still waiting on the fuel. Car comes off of the air jacks. And all they're waiting on is that fuel, making sure that there is no grass in the radiator, no anything form of debris to overheat the car. Jack is given the clearance to go, and he does just that. That was a very, very slick tire change because they were doing, I reckon, sure there, something between maybe six seven seconds before the fuel was finished going in. Yes, and that's what we see for some of the cars up and down the pit lane with the bigger fuel tanks, like the Lexus, like the BMW, and like the Acura. They tend to get their tire stops done well in advance of the fuel, but for some of the other cars, like the Porsche and the Lamborghini, it's a little bit tighter. Hello to Dave Harris, who's trackside for his first ever IMSA race at the Northeast Grand Prix. He says, the sights, the sounds, the smells, it's better than I could ever have, have imagined. Thanks for joining us, Dave, and for all of you here, trackside at Lime Rock Park. If you're further afield, at IMSA Radio is the way to get in touch. Watching on, on IMSA TV or listening on IMSA Radio, good to have your company wherever you are around the world. Race leader Antonio Garcia, each of his last five laps have been 52.0 something. That's remarkable. <laughs> okay, there hasn't been any traffic to do with, fine, but I mean, it's still, that's how you win races, is that consistency, looking after your tyres, and he's maintaining that gap from first to second. It's about 3.1 seconds. It's been that way for, for a little while. Actually, it's closed down a fraction, actually, over the last few hours. It was a little bit more than that, but uh, still, this is a fascinating duel that's going on. Catherine Legg's cars come back to life as well, having been passed a few laps ago by Ben Keating. Catherine's been pacing herself now, and she's on the back of a three-car battle between Cooper McNeil in the 63 Ferrari, Ben Keating in the 33 AMG Mercedes, and her Acura. You're right, but the guy who's really charging is John Potter. I mean, he's now just a second and a half behind that whole battle. He's done a fantastic job for the second week in a row in that number 44 car. We heard him struggling with the brakes. He was struggling with the brakes early on, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't seem to be struggling with them now. They're all stuck behind the Dominic Bauman Lexus. Yeah. That's third down to eighth in GT Daytona, down to seventh in GT Daytona because Jack Hawksworth has made his stop. He'll be on the back of these guys quickly, though. And Dominic Bowen in the blue Lexus comes round to complete another lap as Shea Adam has news with this Continental Tire Pit Lane report. We're going to be getting pit stops as soon as the window opens, John. The 63 Scuderia, of course, Ferrari will be coming in. It will be Cooper McNeil out and Gunnar Jeanette in. And for the 14 Lexus, it will be Carl Marcelli getting into that instead of Dominic Bauman. It's just under a minute from now as the pit board begins to wave again for the Magnus Racing Audi, the number 44. That car will also be making its pit stop ASAP. Three wide coming out of bid bend into the left hander in this battle <laughs> from third down to sixth position. Are they mad? This is fantastic stuff. And John Potter is right on the back of them, as Jeremy su suggested he would be in the 44 car. And Kuma McNeil realises he's losing time here behind that chrome blue Lexus as they come under the Continental Tire Bridge and dive downhill to turn seven, the right hander. The Lexus is staying out. He, oh, he was about 22 seconds short of coming into 
the pit lane to get his 45 minutes in. So just one more lap, I think. Maybe one after this, actually. It'll just depend when they get back to the line. Pat Long still leads GTD with Brian Sellers now in second position, of course, following the pit call of Jack Hawksworth. But Pat Long has half a lap on the field. That's been a brilliant drive by Plongy. The Canadian road racing expert, Canadian, C Californian road racing expert. Uh, he, he likes to spend time in Canada, and he's been spending a, a bit of the summer there with the family. And uh, his wife's family spends a lot of time up there. Pat getting ready to come to the UK for the first ever non-US Nuthkakut, the celebration of all things air-cooled Porsche next weekend at Bista Heritage and into the pit lane comes two of those cars. Bauman is followed in by Cooper McNeil and John Potter because we are right on the 45 minutes. Shea Adam with this Continental Tire pit lane report. Driver changes for all three of the cars and left side tires are being changed on all three of them as well. That is the initial process at the very least. I think they're going to change all three of the tires, or all four, both sides of the cars. Uh, and I don't know if they, did they make it on time? Uh, they might have been a little bit early into the pit lane, but hey ho, we'll figure that out later. Fuel and tires complete on the 63. They're actually, tires are complete. They're just waiting on the fuel. Uh, the 14 was still up on its air jacks. Now that comes off. So the 63 leaves first. The 44 Magnus Audi leaves second. Brilliant stop by the Audi crew. And the Lexus is still sitting on the pit lane. The fuel probe has come out, but it had a little bit of trouble getting going again as the 48 Lamborghini, the championship leader in GTD, is also on the pit lane. This was clear a reaction to everybody else bidding as Madison Snow is up on the wall so Brian Sellers will be getting out and indeed he does. They have new Continental tires for the Lamborghini as well as the fuel. And now the pit board waves and Catherine Legg is in the pits as well in the 86 Acura. Alvaro Parent will be taking over that car so driver changes all across the board in GTD. Still waiting on the fueling as the 48 crew finishes up with the rear tire, the right rear, the last one to go on. Now that's done. Car comes off the air jacks. Driver change still going on but they're not losing any time because the fuel probe's still in as uh, it sounds like there's an air hose that's uh, spitting out a little bit extra than it should be right now. Can't tell what box that's from. I think it might be the Acura. Uh, they're not having trouble with their pit stop though, making sure that everything is perfectly in line. Catherine reported a slight vibration on her first uh, track incident. The air hose problem was from the 86 as the 48 was down and away well before the 86. The Acura was starting to drop off of its air jack. That's the noise that I was hearing. And they managed to put the new tire on before the car got close enough to the ground. So no harm, no foul there. Oh, the 30 reason. Uh, 33 is in two. Sorry, John. So I look down on. the other direction, and all of a sudden I see Ben Keating on the pit lane and Jerome Blakemullen taking over for him. So lots of early driver changes going on here today. A lot of people jumping to react to what the competition was doing. Four tires and fuel for Riley's boys uh, as they are completing the tire change, the left rear and the right front as they do their staggered stop. And this is one of the bigger tanks in the field, so they will have to wait a while for the refueling door closes. Drone is completely strapped in and they've got a lovely new shiny green on the car. I don't remember it being this metallic and reflective before as Jerome has been given the clearance to leave. Loses about two seconds before he can get the car here and back out on track but that is just about everybody we're expecting to see on GTV pit stops except for our leader. Now what's very interesting Jeremy to me there is the GT Daytonas have come in spot on the drive time which means they were in before the GT Le Mans cars and that for sure makes that a two stop race for the GT Daytona cars. Sure. Yeah, uh, That long hasn't come in yet, my Correct. Uh, and he And he's going to stay out now, and he will stay out as long as he can. Uh, if there's a caution, he's probably going to have a whole lap on the field. So uh, he's, he's charging along the best he can. He's doing an absolutely excellent job in the, the lead of the race and taking full advantage. I mean, that's why you start off with, uh, with your pro driver, particularly if you're at the front of the field, an opportunity perhaps to have a whole lap on the field and if, uh, if it carries on the way it's gonna, it, it is right now, that's exactly what it will be. An hour and 51 minutes still to go. So still plenty of racing here. We're only just getting started. Live from Lime Rock Park, we're trackside, right at the start finish line. And the leaders have just rumbled past us. The number three, Antonio Garcia, Corvette with Lawrence Van Tua now three and a half seconds behind. And Richard Westbrook is in the pit lane. Shit, Adam. 
This is the most surprising thing that's happened Absolutely. all day. Uh, Westy has come in. They've got new tires up on the wall for him, and Ryan Briscoe will be jumping behind the wheel. So clearly Westy uh, saving himself maybe for the end of the race as well as a little bit of fuel. He's walking out over toward the pit wall. They are changing all four Michelins. We haven't seen any two tire stops yet, but if we are going to see any of those a little bit later on in the race, I would expect that to be the final stop. There's a lot of attention being paid to that fuel going in the 67 Ford as that tends to be a, an important factor for them and how they win their races. Fuel probe comes out, tires are all on. Ryan Briscoe, hometown hero, goes out on track. No muss, no fuss, nobody rushing, just doing their jobs exactly as they should do. And they've lost a complete lap, of course, whilst they were in the pit lane under green conditions. Ryan Briscoe then and the 67 Chip Ganassi Ford, the first to come into service for the GT Le Mans teams. That's an interesting one there, as I expect to share. Adam, are we going to see Pat Long next time around? Was that the board going out there? He's in the pit lane right now. They have four Continental tires on the wall, as well as Christina Nielsen. So Christina taking over for her first opportunity to drive, and Pat with a great opening stint, as we heard from Christina a little bit earlier on. We expect her to get back in for the conclusion of the race. They are changing the tires, all very calm and cool down there. No worrying about uh, trying to miss a nut or anything. They are doing sticker tires on all four corners, just waiting on the fuel at this point and finishing up the driver change. The door closes and waiting for the fuel nozzle. Now the fueler goes in at the front of this car, so Christina will be able to see very clearly when she's allowed to go. She does just that. No issues, did not stall the car, gets out on the pit lane speed limiter and gets her first opportunity to race around Limerick Park in a year. And again, about six or seven seconds to the good there in terms of changing the wheels, the tires and getting the driver installed and comes out into relatively clear air as well, which is exactly what Madison Snow did. Now that means that Jack Hawksworth, who pitted first in this GT Daytona yeah. uh, race here, will cycle through to the head of the field with Madison Snow around about 13 seconds behind him in second place. Right, I, I want the number 15 team have decided to do rather than stay out as long as they can they're going to split the race into three they know that tire wear is a problem tire degradation is a problem on the number 15 car and the 14 come to that so they've elected to split as neatly as they can into three uh, and uh, and just run as as kind of as hard or as conservative whatever they can to look after the tires as best they can they emerge the from these pit tops in second place they do need to get jack 45 minutes though that's the thing that kind of just because he's not He's not well, that'll be fine, that, that won't be an issue because, right, okay. uh, yeah, that, no, that's fine. Okay, that works. Yep. I see what you're saying. So we've divided the race up into thirds as far as they're concerned. Christina Nielsen in second. Now, let's see when they go through. She might have come out in second place, actually. Yeah, I think she has. What's that? Christina Nielsen may have come out in second place, but Long had yep, such behind a good... Alexis. Yeah, just such a good uh, lead there. So Christina Nielsen confirmed in second place as she's gone across the next timing line. Nine seconds behind Jack Hawksworth. I was right, Madison Snow was 13 seconds behind, but the Porsche came out in between them. So 15 Lexus, the bright red Lexus goes into the lead after the first round of pit stops for GT Daytona. Hawksworth leads from Christina Nielsen in the red, white and black. Porsche in second, the number 58 car, then Madison Snow in the red, silver and black 48. That's the Lamborghini Huracan. Just a yeah, second or so behind Christina Nielsen. Now he's on warmer tyres, he's been out there longer, so he does have an advantage, he's up to speed. And he's just had his best lap of the race in that car as Madison Snow, he's closing very rapidly on Christina Nielsen. Now seven seconds further back, but worthy of a mention, Gunnar Jeanette has taken over the 63 WeatherTech car. That came in fairly early as well on lap 47. That was one of the earlier pit callers. We had the Lexus in on lap 42, and then a couple of cars came in on, three cars came on lap 47. The 14 Lexus, Cal Marcelli now behind the wheel, and Gunnar Jeanette and Andy Lally in the 44 car. So Catherine Legg, just earlier on, going a little bit wide at the uphill chicane. She was in sixth position at the time. She's now given that car over to Alvaro Parent. And, uh, and Madison Snow has just driven around the outside of Christina Nielsen on the entrance to Big Bend. Did he make the pass? That's the question. 
see as they come through the next timing area. He was only a tenth and a half behind. Yes, he has. He's through and gone. On to No Name straight now. That was a brave move from the young Snow. Young in age, but highly experienced Madison Snow, Jeremy, and knows how to win championships. Comes from the, I think we can say now, the Snow dynasty of yeah. drivers. Both father and mother uh, have uh, won races yeah, in the past. Hard to believe he's still only 22 years of age, isn't he, from Utah. And uh, yeah, they've uh, had a huge amount of success in the GT3 Cup Challenge. And now he's translated that into the MC Weather Sports Championship as well. Yeah, Melanie Snow, his mum, took the championship in IMSA. The uh, GT3 Championship effectively back in the day when it was all Porsches. Remember that championship having a great few races here down through the years. One hour and 44 minutes still to go. Ryan Briscoe picking up the pace in the number 67 Ford. Let's just put that car's fastest lap of the race in but it's still Antonio Garcia who has not yet pitted out at the front and we've had 55 minutes on the clock around about that's really about 35 ish minutes in fact a bit less than that probably because we we lost a good 15 minutes at the start of the race with the coming together of Lawson Aschenbach in the Acura and Bill Oberlin in the Turner 86 BMW. While that clear up was going on, that stretched everybody's fuel load just a little bit. Briscoe puts in the fastest lap of the race, a fastest to first section of the race on his way to the fastest lap of the race, a 51 1 in race trim. So Briscoe has been given the hurry up. So we know the tactics now for that car drive it like you stole it. In GT Daytona, Hawksworth by 11 seconds in the red number 15 Lexus from Madison Snow. Championship leader in the Lamborghini number 48 in second. Then Christina Nielsen, 2.3 seconds further back in third. Good at Jeanette, three and a half further back in the 63 Ferrari in fourth position. Sixth and seventh having a battle on a no name straight now. Conor de Pilipe in the white BMW M8 and Patrick Pele who will be disappointed. Oh, mistake by De Felipe. Locks up, going into the uphill chicane. Couldn't get the car turned in and has to go the long way around. Loses a huge amount of time, of course, picking his way through the tire wall chicanes. And Patrick Pele gets the position, goes up into six without having to make the pass. Meantime, the two Fords are having a battle here as the 67 car is trying to get a lap back from its teammate. Round the outside of Dirk Muller, who is battling with Tom Milner, that's third and fourth, but Ryan Briscoe on new tyres, and he may have swapped compounds, of course, is absolutely tearing up Livemock Park at the moment, and he's trying to get through. Now, at this part of the race, you've got to think that somebody would be on the phone here, Jeremy, seeing the Dirk Muller, you've got to let him go. He's on a different strategy here, Dirk, and he might even be able to help you if he gets up to the Corvette in front, down the front straight now. The rumble that you heard was the... Number four of Tom Milner, third position, then the Ford, and then the second of the Ford, Ryan Briscoe, right up behind his teammate, but he's being held up now. Into the pit lane, John Edwards in the black BMW, Shea Adam. So this is the second of our GTLM pit callers, and this is significantly after that number 67. It is the 24, John Edwards getting out, Jesse Crone hopping in, and they are doing four Michelin tires as well as fuel on the BMW, John. So interesting that the strategy is just starting to shake out. I think that now one of the other cars has jumped in, although all the rest will come and follow. Thank you, Shea. Shea Adam still with an hour and 41 minutes to go. And the frustration now as the Ford of Dirk Muller peels off into the pit lane. That allows the 67 to immediately close in on the third place car but he needs to get a wiggle on here he's got an advantage with better rubber as Dirk Muller comes into the pit lane Shea Adam fuel tires and driver change Joey Hands time to get comfy behind the wheel of that Ford GT they're changing the left side tires first and then going on to do the right side as they do the fueling but the interesting thing 
the pit wall has gotten very busy. The reaction was inspired, and now the Corvette number three, the leading car, their crew is up on the pit wall, and the Porsche team was very interested in watching the Ford stop as the tires are done well in advance of the fuel. Joey revving the engine. He wants to go. He loves Limerick Park. He's been on the podium five times here before, and he leaves the pit lane to try and make it six. Yeah, it's pretty close to a little rub between the two Ford GTs earlier on. They must have been, I'm, I'm so close to touching, going down the no-name straight, very close indeed. That's now freed the 67 of Ryan Briscoe and immediately gets down to low 52s when everyone else is high 52s or 53s. But he's wasted a couple or three laps of performance in the Michelin tyres. Well, all of a sudden now, Antonio Garcia is really stretching out that lead. It's now out to almost seven seconds over Lawrence Van Tour in the 912 Porsche. Kind of surprised the Porsche team hasn't brought him in to make a change and get onto uh, fresher tyres. The only other car that's in the 52s, Patrick Pele last time around, along with the leader. So just going to show that the Porsches are coming on very quickly as Garcia is into the pit lane and Shea Adam is there. Even though he was so happy to drive the car, he's uh, finally decided to come in and give Jan Magnussen an opportunity as the team brings him perfectly to a stop on his bike. They're giving him sticker Michelin tires, waiting on the left rear at this point. The right front has already been completed. Fueling still going on, and Garcia very casually just uh, seating himself on the wall as he wastes no energy whatsoever. He looks so completely relaxed as uh, the pit stop goes on. Now they are firing the car, still waiting on the fuel. It's very casual down here. There's no urgency. And now Jan Magnussen puts the urgency into it as he roars out onto the stop. But that is Corvette racing. They do things at their pace, and their pace is fast. But it might look slow. They're getting it done. Uh, yes, uh, the, the urgency there was spelt with V and H here. As yeah. it, as it wins out. Exactly. And the next urgency is going to be spelled with flat and six because it is a Porsche that has come into the pit lane. Copy and that. that is the number 912. So Lawrence Vantor. Admirable job out there. He did a really good performance in qualifying to put the car in second. He jumps out. Earl Bamber, the man from New Zealand who won the 24 Hours Le Mans overall twice, gets in and takes over from his teammate who won the 24 Hours Le Mans this year in GTE Pro. They are doing fuel and tires, a very good stop, very routine. And again, everything looks under control as they drop the car off the air jacks, just waiting on the fuel. Again, the nozzle in the nose of the car. So Lawrence has a perfect view to see when he's got a good opportunity to leave. And just waiting as Earl, excuse me. That was actually kind of a good burnout. I've, I've got to give him credit. There's heat in those Michelins now. Uh, certainly the bat ones as Kiwi Earl Bamba, who I have shared a commentary box with many, many years ago. His uh, formative driving years at Super League Formula in Adria, amongst other places. And he's just as good in the commentary box as he is behind the wheel, rather annoyingly. Earl Bamba out, down and away. So still to pit, the number four, Tom Milner, the number 911, Patrick Pelia, who's been picking up his pace recently. Those two down into the 51s as they're coming to the end of their fuel stint, along with Conor de Felipe, has also stayed uh, out there. 53-1, 52-7, 54-1. For their last laps, but they've all done 51s as their best laps, Jeremy. It's very tight when yeah. these cars are on new tyres. Very tight indeed. It certainly is. And uh, there's that uh, battle for... What's interesting now to Milner me, Jack the lane, Jeremy. Pardon? Milner in the pit lane from the lead. Is Carry on right? with the Hawks. Okay. Comment. So on. just one more car then to come onto pit lane. That'll be Patrick Pile. Whoa! Who runs way wide at the exit of the diving turn there. Lost. Uh, he was way off on the on the uh, on the dirt. Leaves a big cloud of dust behind him as the number 912 car makes its. We see it making its stop a little while ago. Meantime, Tom Milner is in the pit lane. Shea Adam is at Corvette Racing. It was two years ago, John, that this car with Tommy Milner and Oliver Gavin gave Corvette Racing as a program its win number 100. Now they're looking for win number 100 in the US and hoping that they can once again be the guys to bring it. They are doing uh, four tires have already been completed, put on stickers, and lots of fuel, stars and stripes on the gills of this American-made V8 machine. And Oliver Gavin, a Brit, looking to go and defend some American honor.
Yardley Hastings, finest sports car driver, is in the race with an hour and 36 minutes to go. Ollie Gavin, based right in the centre of England in Northamptonshire. A sleepy village. Mad keen on his endurance racing, whether it's on four wheels or two feet. A very, very accomplished marathon runner. And many's the time I've been heading to a farmer's market early on a Sunday morning and seen Ollie pounding the back roads of Northamptonshire. So just the Porsche to come back in, and the Porsche is in. Patrick Peelers with Shea Adam. Who would chase Ollie for 26.2 miles? That's what I want to know. The 911 is in. Patrick Pele is out, and Nick Tandy has taken over the driving responsibilities. A guy who has been obsessed with short track racing his entire life, loves racing here, but has only done it once. So he is looking to go out there and try and improve upon that twice. Excuse me, he did in 2015 and 2016. He has a brilliant stop. The 911 crew putting four new Michelin tires on and fueling the car. Nick wasting no time. As soon as the Fuel Pro came out, he was on the move, and now we've got a real battle on our hands. So all of the pit stops have been completed. Everyone has been down the pit lane once, except for Conor Filippi, the number 25, Rahal Letterman Lanigan BMW, the white car, has cycled to the front of the field with a 12-second gap uh, on the field, but yet to make its first pit stop. But my goodness, Jeremy Shaw, 70 laps complete, completed by that BMW. All right, helped by some full course caution, but we first saw cars coming in on lap number 53. Yeah, and uh, as a result, yeah, part of that is due down to strategy, and particularly in terms of tyre wear. That's why some of them elected to come on the pits a little bit earlier. Uh, I'm sure that's number 67 car trying to get a bit of fresh air, but you know, once the stops have been completed, there's uh, not really going to be an awful lot that has changed. Number nine, number three is ahead of number nine, 12. Number four car, however, uh, stayed out a good bit longer. That's going to certainly lost a fair bit of ground. It came into the pits in third position. It's now, it'll be fifth after the number 25 car finally come. Right. It's Jeremy Shaw, John Hindoff alongside him in the IMSA broadcast booth, which is right on the start finish line. Still slightly overcast. And just barely covering the sunshine, just taking the edge off it. The engines are loving it. Track temperature staying reasonably good, though. This is a very, very abrasive track for the Continentals and the Michelins. Continentals on the GT Daytonas, Michelins on GT LM. And the, in GT Daytona, the, uh, the gap between first and second, Hawksworth and Snow is coming down now at a pretty prodigious rate. It was as high as 10 or 11 seconds. It's now down to six seconds. And Madison Snow is slapping, well, three or four tenths of a second quicker than Hawksworth at this stage. Hawksworth made his first stop on lap 41. We'll see how long he stays out uh, for this run. He's currently run, he's now completed lap, uh, well, just about to complete lap 70. Well, don't forget, he was the first one to pit. Yes, quite. So his tyres again, uh, they've been fighting tyre wear all year, and if there's a track that's going to punish you, if you are at all heavy on tyres, particularly rear tyres, it's going to be here. The left rear tyre takes a hammering around Lime Rock Park. There's a thought that they were trying to engineer some of that out. The common thought is, well, if you're losing the back end, dialing a bit of understeer, it's not quite as simple as that, although that's not a bad idea. You can try and slacken off the back end just a little bit, try for a little more mechanical grip, tighten up the front end. And Conor De Filippi off the throttle a very long time before Big Bend. Let's have a listen the next time he comes through. I wonder if he might be in brake problems as well. Conor De Filippi goes through in that BMW. He's definitely on fuel saving. The 25 BMW leads by just 4.6 seconds now as Jan Magnussen has the sniff of a car to overtake ahead of him. Don't need to give the Great Dane very much encouragement and he'll almost be able to see now the back of the 25, Rahal Latnam and Lanigan, BMW M8, as it comes down the downhill and stays out for one more lap. I'm not quite sure what the thinking is here. Uh, I mean, he's losing two seconds a lap uh, 
to the uh, the other cars have already been onto pit lane for fresh tyres. Uh, I guess he's hoping for a caution uh, to to get back on, the, you know, to to get back into contention perhaps. But Sheer Adam, is there, out of it. is there any movement at all on the RLL pit box for the 25? Occasional swaying in the breeze of the pit board as uh, the entire crew sits on the wall. They are not looking like they're getting ready to have this car in within about the next five laps, which would be about five minutes. That's normally when they scramble up into position. But Alexander Sims has had his helmet on. At one point, he was sitting on the pit wall with his back toward the track, watching one of the monitors. Well, they have called him back up, and he is sitting back on the pit box, still with his helmet on and gloves and everything. But I think they're trying to reach for a caution. Well... That car has not been the faster of the two BMWs this weekend. The 24 cars had a bit of pace as it comes across the line here. It's going to lose the lead down to the inside. There goes Magnussen into Big Bend, and that's all she wrote. No fight from Conor de Filippi, no point. I think they're on a completely different strategy and struggling for grip out of Big Bend now. The BMW M8 GTLM and Corvette number three. Next time around, we'll have the red number one on the side. Second place in the championship leads the race. It does, and uh, into, uh, well, third position at the moment, number 912 of uh, Earl Bamba has just set the fastest lap of the race wow. at a 51.129. The, uh, the record, by the way, stands last year to Antonio Garcia at a 50.7, so we're still a fair way away from that. That's interesting, isn't it, considering how quickly everybody went this morning in qualifying. Yeah, qualifying depth. Three cars in the 49 second bracket, which I never thought I'd see somebody break 50 seconds around here in a GT car. Hawksworth last time around a 54.4. And Madison Snow is now within two and a half seconds, took 1.1 seconds out of the Lexus yeah. last time around in GT Daytona. And the Lexus again struggling. This has been their Achilles heel. They got over it and managed to get the result at uh, mid-Ohio. And number 63 car, by the way, Gunnar Jeanette has found a way past Christine and Nielsen. So the, uh, Clark, the car that was running away with GTD not so long ago in the first stint by, with Patrick Long on the wheels now fallen to fourth position. Andy Lally is next up, and he's about four seconds behind in fifth play place. Yes, when did Christina get in the car? She lap 53. Yeah, she completed lap 52 laps. Right. OK, so that's about 50 minutes ago. Uh, sorry, that's uh, about... Pat did about 50 minutes, so... Need to keep an eye on that, because I have a suspicion that Pat will be back in as soon as he can be. One full course caution so far, effectively at the end of the first racing lap, or part way around... Lap two coming together between Bill Oberlin and Lawson Ashenbach. Bill in the BMW uh, assessed the uh, assessed a penalty for that as a drive-through, but that car hasn't come back yet. Lawson Ashenbach's car also out in the paddock at the moment and not looking to come back anytime soon, if at all. So incident responsibility going to the 96 Turner BMW. As Brian Sellers' teammate, Madison Snow, can now see his quarry being Jack Hawksworth. Between them, the leader of the race, Jan Magnussen. Yeah, who's just set that car's fastest lap of the race at 51.300 last time but Nick Tandy by the way just reset fastest lap in the number 911 Porsche is running back in the eighth position is Nick but he's got the fastest car on the track uh, as we saw last year with uh, with the uh, with the Porsches that, that pretty much ran away with the race with so finished first and second Magnussen puts his best lap of the race in at the head of the field again 51.1 50.993 what appropriate number, 993 being an air-cooled Porsche for Earl Bamba in the 912. As here comes the battle for the GTD lead, and it's very nearly... Cyber oh, problem for the bonnet on the 911. It's the, uh, the front cover is about to fall off that car, and Nick Tandy could be in strife here. 
Tandy in the number 911, very quick, but the right hand side of the front cover, I won't call it the bonnet because there's no engine under there, but you know what I mean, has come loose as the lead in GT Daytona is now about five car lengths. And Lexus are on the wall. Shea Adam, they're coming down. Do you think it's it's got to be Hawksworth coming in, hasn't it? Yes, it's definitely, they're up on the wall for the number 15 uh, as they have tires ready to go and they will be refueling the car. I don't see Mario from where I am right now though, so I don't see that bright yellow, green and blue helmet. I'm a little bit further down the pit lane, and I mean a little bit, uh, waiting for that number 911. They've got a big tape piece, uh, the 100 mile an hour sticky tape. They're not gonna put a new bonnet on the car. They're gonna just try and tape it down and hope that it sticks, literally. Well, there's nothing under there that they need to get to in this race. If they're replenishing fluids there in this shorter race, they're in bigger trouble than not being able to get that cover back on. Through the uphill at turn five, here comes Brian Sellers, pulls out the driver's right, then goes to the left as Hawksworth blocks for a moment. He's desperately trying to stay ahead before he comes into the pit lane. Under an hour and 25 minutes to go. To the downhill, right-handed corner. Hawksworth pulls off to the right. He even struggled there to get the car to bite to come into the pit lane. And Hawksworth from the lead for his second stop of the race. Shea Adam with his Continental Tire pit lane report. Tandy stays out, just uh, wanted to mention that. As uh, Hawksworth is in, they are doing the left side, the left front and the right rear. They do staggered stops on the Lexus. While the fueling is going on, they should have the tire change done well in advance of the fuel, because remember, it is one of the bigger fuel tanks in the field. A little bit of a struggle to get the right front off, and the mechanic manages to get a good grip and pull that Continental off. They have finished with the tire change. Car comes off the air, Jack's fuel hose comes out, and Jack Hawksworth struggles to get grip as he leaves the pit box, but does manage to get it going and point it in the right direction. Back out on track, so no driver change yet for that number 15. Super Mario still sitting on the pit wall. He needs to be in 45 minutes before the end. That's all that needs to be done. And with, what, 84 minutes to go, doesn't take an arithmetical genius to work out that Jack Hawtsworth needs to do about another 40 minutes. Indeed, which is... Uh Meantime, Madison Snow putting in another good lap, 52.7 last time around. Should mention Earl Bamba, by the way, got the oh, got the lap down to a couple of gap down to a couple of seconds, but it's just gone out again as uh, Jan Magnussen takes a second out of him. So they're trading time as they get through traffic. Let's give you a rundown with an hour and 23 minutes exactly still to go. Jan Magnussen leads by now 3.4 seconds. Three Corvette from 912 Porsche. Another two and a half seconds further back, the first of the port of the first of the Fords is Joy Hand. But Ryan Briscoe has been driving like a demon in the 67 car. Remember, that car was the first of the GT Le Mans cars to pit, so it's got a lighter fuel load at the moment and uh, less or more worn tyres. Less good tyres, what I was going to say. But he's got that gap to the leader down to 14 seconds now, and he's only eight seconds behind his teammate. Top six made up by Oli Gavin in the second Chevy, the number four. He's 4.5 seconds back of the second Ford, and then three and a half seconds further back down the road, Jesse Thron in the black BMW is in sixth position. Then it's Conor De Filippi, might as well give you the full eight. Nick Tandy is in eighth position, but has been turning some very, very quick laps indeed. In GTD, championship leading Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini, Madison Snow. 10 seconds to the good from Gunnar Jeanette in second place now. Christina Nielsen in third. 48 Lamborghini, 63 white and black Ferrari, 58 red, white and black Porsche, Christina Nielsen. Then three seconds further back, Andy Lally in the dark grey number 44 Audi with Jerome Bleakermolen looking menacing in the 33 AMG GT4 in fourth position, in fifth position. Then Alvaro Parent in sixth in the 86 car. That's the Great Acura, then the two Lexus clearly struggling to keep the tyres underneath them at the moment, 14 from 15. Behind the wall at the moment, Lawson Aschenbach's 93, the red Acura, not been seen since the opening lap, and Bill Oberlin in the 96 turn of BMW came back on a flatbed after those two cars came together in an incident for which Bill Oberlin were, was assigned the responsibility and if that car does come back it will have to do a drive through under green 
flag conditions. That's how it stands with an hour and 20 minutes, 80 minutes, eight zero minutes to go here at the Northeast Grand Prix. Uh, IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship at Lime Rock Park. And this is absolutely full on motor racing, flat out at the moment for everybody. Nobody leaving anything out there on the circuit, Jeremy. No, it's brilliant, isn't it? And uh, the race leader, uh, Antonio uh, Jan Magus now, of course, taking over from Antonio Garcia. He's settled into a pace in the sort of mid 51s. The gap from first to second, it was down as low as three and a half seconds. It's now mm. four and a half seconds. Second to third, that's about two and a half. It's been that way for a little while. Uh, and they are gradually edging away just a little bit from number 67 car, which is, as you were talking about earlier on, running a different strategy to everybody else. It's kind of doing similar thing to the Lexus kind of a 50 by sl splitting up the race into uh, even portions, I believe. They certainly aren't trying to make it on one stop like the 25 car is. I can't figure that one out at all because it's now fallen to the back of the mm. field and it hasn't even made a pit stop yet. So you completely got me on that one. Uh, I guess it would it was worth a try for a while in case it was a full course caution, but uh, well now he's got to stay on the lead lap, Jeremy. Well, which he isn't going to do, uh, and yeah, well, after he's made his pit stop, anyhow. Shea Adam is looking at the rear Hal Letterman pit area. I spot a wild Simsy up on the pit wall. So <laughs> he's uh, he's emerged down from the Pratt perch. They finally elected to let Connor De Filippi know that he can pit at some point uh, coming up here shortly. The rest of the crew is still seated, but the Michelin tires have been righted, so uh, they are waiting for their car to come in. It's been very amusing, though. Conor Filippi lifting about halfway down the straight, completely off the throttle, and then coasting into the brake zone. A massive fuel save effort from him, as now those bright white headlights, the 25 BMW, the white one this weekend, come into the pit lane, and Conor Filippi, I, I need to ask him, did he have his water bottle full of fuel? What, what was going on there? How did he make that stint so long? He comes in, he hits his marks, the engine is still running, so we didn't run it completely out of fuel. They are doing the tire change on the right front and left rear, and then left front and right rear. It is sticky Michelin tires for Alexander Sims, who only has one start at Lime Rock Park. That was last year, where he and Bill Oberlin finished sixth. Driver change still going on. Connor reaching in and doing the left uh, top belt for Sims. Car comes off the air jacks rather violently. It fires back up. They're still waiting on the fuel, though. It is a lot of fuel that goes into this BMW, the uh, second biggest tank in the class. It might be the biggest, though, actually. Haven't checked the charts in a while. Now he's cleared to go, and Alexander Sims, much like a wild animal who's been uncaged, roars into action. Drops him off the lead lap, of course, in GT Le Mans. But he does come out if he can get out now and get up the speed. Is he going to be able to get out into a bit of clean air? Comes out right in front of the WeatherTech Ferrari and then locks up as he goes into Big Bend and trying to stay ahead, which he does. This is really important for Sims here. And I would suggest that the Gunnar Jeanette, second place at the moment in GT Daytona, would rather have been past him there as Alexander Sims was trailing the brake all the way through Big Bend. Just about got it done, locked up the right front, uh, right rear, excuse me, as he was going into Big bend and drifted wide, but manages to hold on to track position, and he stayed ahead of Magnussen. That's key. He has stayed ahead of Magnussen, so he stayed just one lap off the lead. Had he gone back any further, he would have been two full laps off the lead, and here comes Magnussen. So Magnussen completes laps 90, and just ahead of him, Sims has just lapped Completed lap 88. So he's dro he has dropped two laps and he's about to go three. Oh no, he's, he's not because he's on the back of. So he's almost two laps down. He's one car length away from two laps off the lead at the moment. BMW could do with a bit of a caution. Well, that would get him back around, wouldn't it? get him back uh, to I mean, lap 89, but he'll still be a lap off the lead. Yeah, he, I mean, you know, he's going to make, uh, he's obviously trying to make it all just uh, on one fuel stop, uh, but uh, I don't think that's going to work in his favour. Well, it'd be an extraordinary thing, thing be. if he does. So, but even if he can, Jeremy, exactly. I mean, <laughs> he's lost that much time. He's, he's virtually two minutes down at the moment in terms of, of lap. He's you know, in time, rather. And he's going to half that. 
by saving a pit stop, but that's all. And it's the time that he's lost driving slower that's hurt him. Yeah, just uh, hearing, by the way, as we mentioned, Sergio Marchioni stepping away uh, from the head of FCA, replaced by Mike Manley, the global head of Jeep, a Brit. Uh, thanks to Bubba Clark for passing that on to me earlier on. We wish Sergio Marchioni, as I said, all the best. Uh, a great supporter of motorsport and the Alpha brand in particular health concerns there so our best wishes to Mr Marcioni and good luck to Mike Manley promoted to head of group so at the moment the Ferrari in the field is that of Gunnar Jeanette in second place in GTD but now nearly 15 seconds away from the Lamborghini of Madison Snow, championship leader leading the race. Still plenty to go here, at least one more pit stop for everybody, two for some. Alexander Sims picking up pace with those new Michelins, a 51.2, fastest man on the track last time around, as he scrambles to stay ahead of Jan Magnussen, Oh, he loses the car right in the middle of the left-hander after Big Bend, but manages to hold on to a lurid-looking slide, but that's how hard Sims is fighting to stay just one lap off the lead. But he's not pulling away from Magnussen. If anything, Magnussen seems to be using him as a target. And Magnussen was a 51.5 last time around. Earl Bamba, a 51.6 in second place in the 9.12 Porsche. Joey Hand, 52 flat, 51.9 for Ryan Briscoe, the two Fords, 66 and 67 in third and fourth position. 52.6 for Ollie Gavin, caught up at the moment behind the number 33 of Jerome Blake and and he's just about to go through as they come out of the uphill area. And indeed, Ollie Gavin does go through. It's not a pass for position though, but it springs Ollie into a bit of clear air. Bit of a battle actually there. Jerome Blakemolen in fifth in the 33 Mercedes crossing the line now. Behind him, Alvaro Parent. Those two battling for second and third in the GTD Drivers' Championship in that 33 and 86. Indeed, and being be closed upon by uh, Jack Hawks because he's on that different strategy in car number 15. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty interesting stuff. I mean, I think everybody at this stage has to make one more pit stop to the end of the race, but they're going to be making them at completely different times. Yes. Let's go to Shea Adam, our Continental Tire pit lane reporter. The blessing in disguise, John, comes for the championship leaders. They missed a complete session and about two halves sessions, which means that they have brand new tires yes. for the end of this race. Whereas I'm seeing the 86 with some tires up on the wall, they are scrubbed in rubber. They are not completely shiny and new with stickers on them. They still have a lot of tread life in them, albeit but they don't have that new sheen for the good extra lap or two that Madison Snow will be getting on his next stop. But how many tires will he be getting, Shay? Yes, that's the question. There two. are two on the wall yeah. for the Acura, but there are none out yet for the Lamborghini. They're yeah. not showing their hands. That's right. Yeah, exactly right. To be honest, if you're standing still long enough to have to put a full load of fuel in, Jeremy, you put four new tires on. It's only if you need to splash at the end where you either put no tyres on or left sides only. That's what I would say. This is fascinating because uh, his lead uh, over second place was still waiting for uh, Gunnar Jeanette. Here he comes now across the line. It was about 14 seconds. What is it now? That's 17. 17. Uh, and that's about the difference it would take uh, to make to take, make it a four-tyre stop rather than a two-tyre stop. So if he can uh, edge out a bit more of a gap, they should be able to make all four tyres on that car. And uh, no, it's, it, yesterday, they, when they... When they uh, tried this in practice they put on just left-hand side tires and it didn't cost him any time at all out on the racetrack he gained in time in the pits by only changing two rather than four but he wasn't losing any time out on the racetrack afterwards so uh, he's uh, he's looking good either way at the moment uh, it, again jeremy it comes down to the fuel the fuel will be the deciding factor there's no point on only putting two on if you uh, have to put a full set of fuel in it 
and, you, and you're sitting waiting for, you know, if you're sitting waiting for 15 seconds for the fuel to be finished, you might as well have put the four on. Shea Adam can see more of what's going on here. Scrubbed on new tyres for GTD contenders, Shea. I'm doing a little bit of snooping right now. Um, Good for, the, for you. Yeah, well, you know, I get bored. Uh, the 33, just kidding, AMG Mercedes. They have four scrubbed Continentals sitting gently up against the wall, as does the 63 Scuderia of course, Ferrari. They also have four scrubbed Continentals, lightly, very, very gently worn in. Um, our pole sitter has four brand new Continental tires, though, still with the stickers on them. So when Pat Wong gets back into that 58 Porsche, he gets a brand new car underneath him, and uh, that's going to be entertaining. Lexus does not have their tires set out yet, but I see new tires sitting back there, so uh, they've got those to play with as well. Shea Adam with that Continental tire pit lane update. All of a sudden, uh, in lapping Brian Sellers, Yang Magnussen cost himself better part of a couple of seconds, all of a sudden between first and second position. It's only just over one second. Well, only four seconds between the top three now, Jeremy. Hand. He's been, he's been uh, around about two and a half seconds behind pretty much throughout this stint. So the number 9, 12 and 66 in second and third places are, uh, well, all three leaders are running very similar lap times, to be perfectly honest. But just uh, that traffic on that last lap cost Magnussen much of his advantage. Ollie Gavin down to 2.2 seconds behind Ryan Briscoe, who was held up in traffic last time around. Of course, Ollie will have to negotiate that traffic when he comes to it as well. You're listening to IMSA Radio. IMSA Radio and IMSA TV together, live from Lime Rock Park. Jeremy Shaw and John Hindoff in the IMSA Broadcast Centre. Lovely to have your company. It's been overcast but dry all the way through this race. Just a light overcast. Beautiful weather. Uh, high. 60s to early 70s centigrade 21 22 degrees celsius and it was rising gently perfect weather for motor racing big crowd on hand today spreading themselves out around the green areas of lime rock park and here's how it stands with an hour and nine minutes to go GT Daytona, Madison Snow leads the championship, leads the race in the 48 Lamborghini from Paul Miller Racing by 14 seconds and a bit. As 100 laps completed by the leaders of the race. Gunnar Jeanette second in the 63 Ferrari, the white and black WeatherTech car. Then Christina Nielsen in the Porsche number 58. That's the red, white and black right motorsports car. Looking further down, Alvaro Parent and Jack Hawksworth are having a battle in GT Daytona for sixth position with Jerome Blake and Morland just a second further up the road. They're coming down to the final corner now. So that's the 33, mainly white, Mercedes AMG GT4, the accurate in its grey, almost urban camouflage-like colours. And then the red, number 15, goes down the inside. The Lexus coming from a long way back, but with the advantage of better tyres, Jack Hawksworth goes through and up in the sixth position on a completely different strategy from the cars around it. And we don't know whether it's going to pay off. As simple as that, we're looking at this and we're not sure. Looks like the there's a Lexus about to pit, uh, lasting on lap 47 was Kyle Marcelli, and he is in the pit lane, Shea Adam. Fuel, and at the very least, they are doing, nope, they're gonna do all four tires because they're working on the right rear. So Kyle Marcelli staying in the car, they are giving him new tires. These were some of the shiny new ones that I saw mechanics sitting on. So four new Continental for Kyle Marcelli. They're waiting on the fuel as the tire change still going on. The mechanics raise their hands to signify that all is good at the rear of the car. Now it is good at the front, and the car comes off the air jacks just waiting on fuel. Last time that this happened, it triggered a slew of GTB pit stops in response. I'm not sure that we're going to see the same thing because there's a lot more calm faces on the pit lane than there were last time. But interestingly, we have 86 mechanics up on the wall, so that Acura will be coming in, as well as people up on the wall for the four Corvette. So our first GTLM car to come in for the final stop, I think, will be Oliver Gavin. Well, I think from here, John, with an hour and six minutes to go, the GTD cars are just about making it yeah, to the finish. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be tight, uh, it's but it's going to be tight. Can. But uh, that's, that's, I'm sure, the number 14 car would have played their hand such that they think they can get to the end from here. They've been losing a lot of time, by the way, before making that pit stop, so they came in at the earliest opportunity because those tyres were clearly shot on that number 14 car. 
86, Actua, Alvaro, Parent into the pit lane. Uh, the other car, by the way, that came, the other two cars that came in on lap 47, which is when that Acura came in, was Gunnar Jeanette in the 63 Ferrari and Andy Lally in the 44 Audi. Let's get to Shea Adam for a Continental Tire pit lane update from Acura. I only saw the two tires up on the wall, but they do have four Continentals that are going on this car, so lightly scrubbed rubber. Doesn't have the stickers of the nice sheen on it, but it's still practically a brand new car. When they pulled off the left rear tire, they again checked the wheel well to make sure that everything was entirely copacetic, and it was. Car comes off the air jacks now. The fuel just still going in. Now it's done. Wow, perfect time by the MSR guys. Fuel nozzle came out, and Alvaro Parent left the pit lane. Al Parent then back into the race in the 86. How far do you go now? before making your last pit stop. The advantage here, of course, in staying out is you get not only track position, but you'll probably get at least a lap on your competition. This is not like a normal racetrack, so you don't have to necessarily jump as soon as everyone else does. But however, in comes Madison Snow, the leader of the race with an hour and five minutes to go is in the pit lane. Shit, Adam. That's the sound of the beautiful Lamborghini engine as it comes in on the pit lane. Speed limiter hits its marks. They have new tires, and Brian Seller is taking a drinks bottle over to Madison Snow. So Madison will finish out the race. Brian having his duties completed, but he is still responsible for making sure that his teammate is comfortable. Very nice. They are changing all four of the tires on this Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini. Stickers, again, going on to this car. The advantage that they gained back losing those two sessions. What looked like a curse actually turned out to be a bit of a blessing. Just waiting on the fuel for this car, and then they will send Madison back out. Now he goes. Again, a perfect stop. MSR and Paul Miller Racing. I have to say, that was beautifully executed in terms of the fuel nozzle coming out and the driver leaving the pits. And Madison Snow joins a completely empty circuit in front and behind him. That's great timing. They may have been looking at the tracker there and working out where they were going to get him out. An hour and four minutes then. They'll be going to the end from here. And that is a car that we know is pretty good on its Continental tyres. Through into the lead of GTD has gone Gunnar Jeanette last in the pit at lap 47. And that, and we're now on lap 102 for the GT Daytona runners. So uh, that is 53, uh, 55 laps ago into the pit lane from the lead, Jan Magnussen. He was last in the pits on lap number 66, and we're on. 106 now, so that's a 50-lap stint for the Corvette number three, Shea. Four beautiful, shiny new Michelin tires going on to all four corners of that number three Corvette. The pit stop executed again to perfection. In terms of the tire change, everybody staying calm and doing their job. The fuel just enough that they need to get it into the end, and Max goes back out. So, an hour and two minutes. I'm not sure where they, they could go from there. It might require a little splash if we go green from here. May not have had any choice. Oh, off, someone's off at the first corner. And it's Gunnar Jeanette. It's Gunnar Jeanette's gone off whilst leading in GT Daytona. And Wright Motorsport are in. Christina Nielsen presumably getting out of the car. Now Gunnar Jeanette is back up to speed, but he's lost a whole heap of ground. Alvaro Perrin about to come through and take a lap back. Oh, he's got squeezed onto the curbing and could have Jeanette hit the curb and a big piece of rubber being thrown off and in there as well, the 25 BMW, Alexander Sims. So good at Jeanette and very uncharacteristic loss of concentration there by Gunnar. And is he coming into the pit lane? Yes, he is, the 63. Dives into the pit lane. What I can't tell you is how that all started for Gunnar Jeanette. He was leading the GTD category. He's now in the pit lane. He was coming down into turn one. Looked like it was on his own. Turns into the apex. Back end's going to go, I reckon. No, he just... Ah, oh, yes. Back end went right at the exit. Spins him round on the grass. Good catch from Gunnar Jeanette. And managed to get onto... Back into the right direction. Shea Adam is watching that pit stop with his Continental tyre 
pit lane report. Four tires and fuel and a new drinks bottle for Gunnar Jeanette. There is no grass in the radiator of this car. And Andy Lally in the 44 Magnus Audi leads ahead of him, also with four tires and fuel service for that Audi. Is there's Gunnar rumbling back out down the pit lane. We also have Oliver Gavin in the pit. He is getting four new Michelin tires and fuel for the Corvette. And the other pit stop you mentioned, John, it was the 58 Wright Motorsports Porsche. It was fuel tires and Pat Long reinstalled with four brand new Continentals. He'll be a happy kid for this next couple of laps as the 33, the third place car in the championship comes in and Jerome Leakmullen, well, they're doing the left sides first. And they're doing right side. So it has been four tires from everybody up and down the pit lane so far. Who's going to be the first car to gamble and only do two? Not entirely sure as the 24 BMW is now also in the pit lane. It will be four tires and fuel for Jesse Krohn as well. Now, the thing is, this year, though, that nobody has been tight on getting the fuel in. So if they're putting a full tank of fuel in, there's plenty of time to do the tyres if they get it right, so they might as well do all four shit. I completely agree, and I think the one car we might see go with that gamble might just be that 15 Lexus when they come in, but the next time that they pit, they will have to do their driver change as well, so they will also need a little bit of extra time. I don't know that we're going to see the two-tire strategy play out in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race today. Shea Adam with that Continental tyre, pit lane before the 24 with a little bit of damage on the left rear, behind the left rear wheel from contact out on the circuit that's down and away Jesse Krohn brought the car in and has stayed in the car as he rejoins meantime out on the circuit the 912 Earl Bamba is leading and he has got the number 44 Audi of Andy Lally right ahead of him as he comes into West Bend can't get through there and the Kiwi will just lay back trying to get a good run in the downhill right hander Lally right to the apex of the curb, brilliant stuff, and that 44 Magnus Racing Audi does punch off the corner very quick. It's a slippery car down the straight, and Bamba's nowhere near getting a pass made. Andy Lally rides the curb on the inside, and on the second part of the corner where Earl Bamba gives the curbs a wide berth in the Porsche. Into the left-hander, this is costing Bamba time now. 53-6 last time around. That's more than half a second away from what the rivals are doing around him and he will want to get through into the uphill Lally goes in slightly defensively Bamba now right up behind the Audi will go to the right and make that position going into the West Bend this time around as Lally makes room for the 911 RSR our race leader with just under an hour to go 58 minutes on the clock and coming up for 54 laps completed, 55 laps completed for Earl Bamba since his last pit stop. It's good fuel mileage. So getting close to the last pit stop for that car as well. And if they go another three or four laps, Jeremy, that Porsche will be within sight of the finish without another pit stop. Maybe that's what Porsche have been doing. I think they'll be able to go if they get four or five more laps out of that Porsche right to the end. Which Porsche? The 912. Oh, they can all make a pit stop uh, now and get to the end. Uh, you, you, I think Even the guys who stopped with just over an hour to go in GTLF? Uh, I reckon, I reckon, yes, I think so. I think they know what they... I, I think they're sure right. they I think so. That was the first stop. Two pit stops an hour. Yeah, it should be just two pit stops for the race, so, you know, I reckon they can get to the end from here. Ryan Briscoe. And I think the number three car would have come in. Again, it's his earliest opportunity, both of the Corvettes. Well, Jan Magnussen's just put in a 51-1. That was that car's fastest lap of the race. He came in with an hour and three, left with an hour and three minutes, nearly an hour and four minutes still to go. Ryan Briscoe stayed in the 67. Shea Adam can tell us what the pit strategy was for Chip Ganassi Racing. Four sticker tires, a lot of fuel, and I'm pretty sure I saw Frisco chuck out two fluffy pink things. So uh, he doesn't need uh, Richard Westbrook slippers. And we finally have Super Mario up on the wall. So the 15 Lexus will be pitting very, very soon. And it will be Mario getting in and Jack finally getting out. And they've got four tires on the wall. Jack Hawks with being in that car since the start. Uh, two hours and 40 we had on the clock at the start. We've now got 56 minutes remaining. Off has gone the leader. Earl Bamba has gone off just before the right-hander on a no-name straight. Understeered off there on his own. 
He's been pushing very hard the last couple of laps, but he's had to go offline to make some passes on slower cars. And here comes Joey Hahn, the 66 car is right there. This is the battle for the lead there. It was four seconds at the line, and that's gone. Four seconds is gone. Earl Bamba making a mistake as he was trying to get through traffic. He had cleared some traffic, but I think he must have dirtied his tyres as he was coming through. Yeah, he'd gone by the Audi the lap before and just understeered off at Big Bend. Turns in, didn't get anywhere near the kerb. And the 912 just understeering off. He did very well to keep that car on. We've seen a few people do that this weekend, but Earl Bamba managed to steer out of the tyres. What he has done is thrown away a four second lead. It's now, it was four seconds, it's now four tenths back to Joey Hand. And the race is on. Both of those cars have only made one pit stop. They're due their second pit stop shortly. Every single advantage required here towards the end of the race. And once again, Earl Bamba has to go by Andy Lally in the 44. Audi in fourth position. All the fours for Andy Lally through the diving turn. And Earl Bamba will be saying, oh, I've been here before. This car's quick down the straight. Got to get a really good... Uh, Ford into the pits. Ford into the pits, the 66. Joey Hunt has hit the pit lane with 54 minutes to go, having done a 65-lap stint. Check that, 55-lap stint. Share, Adam. Left side tires going on first. The fuel nozzle is in. They have right side tires up on the wall, but they are changing the left first. It's a strategy that they employ to try and fool me and to think they're going with the left sides only. But no, no, they are doing all four Michelins. The fuel nozzle is still in on the right side. Joey would uh, be telling his team over the radio, just let me go, guys. I've got enough. I can make it work. And he does. A nice little bit of smoke coming out of that Ford GT as he gets to the pit lane exit, takes off the limiter, and goes full power. Joey Hand, who has that uh, 66 car, has the fastest third sector type, as surely Earl Bamba will be coming in sometime soon. He's in now. So here's the race. Joey Hand pitted a lap earlier. Nick Tandy is only 32 seconds behind his teammate, and he has to make his last stop as well. Share, Adam. This will be won by the pit crews, John. The fuel and tires will be determined where they come back out on track. They are doing four new Michelins. Left sides are already changed. The right side's nearly complete as they seat the right front into place. There it goes. A little bit of trouble with the wheel gun, getting it settled in place, and the wheel gun is not functioning. The wheel gun is not functioning on the right front of this car, and it will not settle in. The fueling is done. There goes the race, as now they're struggling to try and get another wheel gun to get it. There it goes. Now he goes back out, but that's it. One faulty wheel gun cost the 912. And that's cost them getting out in front of the Ford. They've dropped a host of time. They would have got out in front if that had come down and away when they had finished fueling. And Earl Bamba now is going to have to play catch up for the next 52 and a half minutes. Our Porsche keys to the race, track position, tire strategy, and getting your pit stops right. And that pit stop went awry. The left, the right front wheel recalcitrant on that wheel nut, the center lock wheel nut by the tyre changer, just looked like he didn't get the wheel seated correctly. It's a tough job to do, you lift the wheel up with one hand and you have the gun already in position on the nut which is captured on the wheel and you seat it on and fire it straight away but if it doesn't go on straight away you've got to give it a straight nut and that's exactly what happened. He just didn't get it straight on the hub. The first time that he went on, the wheel gun comes off, it goes on, it comes off, it goes on. It's not turning the wheel nut. One of the other crew members saying, forget it, mate, try a different gun. You're gonna have to do something else. He had to actually spin the wheel nut on by hand and grab a second gun, and then it was down and away. But it cost a good five, six, seven seconds after the fuel hose was out and that car could have been down the road and it's dropped Bamba down behind his teammate and behind Joey Hand and behind Jan Magnussen who leads the race and has made two pit stops. That's right, number 911 car has not so that'll lose a lot of ground. Uh, number three car certainly is looking good right now. 
And I'm surprised that the... Oh, uh, has nearly team. lost a full lap, Jeremy, because yeah. he's got the number three car right behind him now, and Jan Magnussen will want to put him a lap down. That will give him a cushion if there's a yellow flag, and that will take one of his major contenders out of the race. Earl Bamba is struggling still, even on new tyres, with understeer going into the first corner at Big Bend. 55, zero minutes to go. Jesse Cron, fastest lap of the race for the 25, uh, 24 BMW, 51.2 last time around. Magnussen with four seconds on Nick Tandy, but Tandy owes us a pit stop. He was last in on lap 70. He's been out there 50 laps exactly. He's probably got five or six more laps to go, so he won't need a full fuel load but he's not going to be challenging for the lead, and Earl Bamba has dropped way back, almost a full minute on the leader. Uh, by the way, in GTD, Harrison yeah. Snow now leads by 26 seconds, he says, cooling himself down for a moment, over Pat Long, who's in second place, 48 Lambo from 58 Porsche, then three seconds back to Andy Lally, yeah. having a quiet but very impressive race in that 44 Magnus Racing Audi. John Potter, by the way, take a bow, struggling yeah. with brakes early on, but clearly got his head round it and stayed on the lead lap. Yeah, really impressive by uh, John Potter because he, he did struggle and then he made up a lot of ground. He caught up basically 20 seconds or 10 seconds, at yeah. least whatever it was in the early part of the race over, over the rest of the field. Yeah, 10 seconds, but he made that up. And uh, that was a really good first in. Andy, Andy Lally has done a great job from there. Once again, good strategy from that team. And uh, they are looking good. It actually, uh, he's whittling away that deficit also to number 58 car of Patrick Long. Patrick Long, I mean, he was, uh, he was gone in the first stint of the race, but he's got nothing now, it would appear, for, for, for anybody. Uh, even Andy Lally is closing in. And number 48 car, it's, as you said, it's got a, a gap of uh, over 25 seconds. Madison Snow was the first of those cars to make his final pit stop, but only by a couple of three laps on Pat Long and Andy Lally, so there's not a huge difference there. In fourth position, Alvaro Parent in GTD in the number 86 Acura stopped on lap number 100, so he's another couple of laps worse off than Madison Snow in terms of tyre life and fuel, but I don't see that as an issue for the GTDs. As far as the GT Le Mans cars, six seconds now, the gap between Jan Magnussen, who leads, and Andy Lally in... Andy Lally, Nick Tandy, almost rhymes with it, in second place in the number 911 Porsche. Who still owes us a pit stop. Correct, he's now done 52 laps since he was last in the pits. Uh, Joey Hand has just put his fastest lap of the race in, in the number 66 Porsche. Porsche Ford and he's about to go quicker still in that 66 Ford GT he's 5.2 seconds behind second place at the moment but crucially he's got a good gap now on the fourth place car of Earl Bamba and Earl Bamba will be seething having lost time in the pit lane Earl not hanging about himself but uh, having lost quite a lot of time, he's just gone by, so we'll see what the time gap is. He stayed ahead of Jan Magnussen as they went through. Yeah, he's got 18 and a half seconds between himself and Joey Hahn. That will become second and third between those two when Nick Tandy eventually pits. But Jan Magnussen has a stranglehold on this in the number three Chevy Corvette, came into the championship with Tonio Garcia, came into this race second in the championship with Tonio Garcia. And it looks like they are going to be challenging the championship leaders by the time they leave Lime Rock Park. 47 minutes to go. That's how it stands. As we're just after 5 o'clock in the evening, we should be finishing around 10 minutes before 6. 6 o'clock curfew here. That seems to be working perfectly well in terms of the timings here. Well done to IMSA. A very tightly run schedule this weekend not a lot of time for breath for anybody teams and the marshals in particular our thanks and appreciation to all the volunteer flaggers marshals track services and officials who are here this weekend who have worked extremely hard indeed just the two championships but my goodness we've packed a lot of track time in to these two days remember we can't even fire engines up before 10 o'clock in the morning on a weekday nine o'clock 
on a Saturday, so that has affected the scheduling. Meantime, second place is about to go the way of a Ford. Through goes Joey Hand into turn number one, big bend. And Nick Tandy now is losing time. Needs to get that car into the pit lane. Yeah. Can't see why they're holding out now. They can certainly get to the end from here. 45 minutes to go, and he's losing time. Needs a new set of Michelins pretty badly. He's dropping back. He's dropped back 10, 12 cars lengths from the Ford in a part of the circuit where the Porsche is traditionally very good. My goodness, Tandy's nailing that middle curb. Actually straddling it, putting his left-hand Michelins on the back side of that curb. Magnussen already coming down to turn number one. Spot on 45 minutes to go, Jeremy. Yep, absolutely right. And uh, a very commanding lead now for, for both the GTLM and GT Daytona. 122 laps completed by Madison Snow in the number 48. A Lamborghini was still with. There goes uh, Patrick Long in second place. Now the gap between those two, 24.4 seconds. So it's come down fractionally, but to no nothing meaningful. Meanwhile, the uh, gap from second to third from Patrick Long to Andy Lally, that's kind of stabilized now at around about 2.7 seconds. It's been that way for about the last half a dozen laps. So Andy Lally, though, is, is, it's been a really, really good run to get up into third place. Alvaro Parent, well, he's got his mirrors full because, Jack, because Mario Farnbacher in the Lexus once passed. There's been a coming together between the number 24 BMW and what has he hit? Well, the 912 hit the back of the 44, but that was definitely a BMW coming into the pit lane, wasn't it? That was Jesse Krohn coming in. Yes, it was. And the damage is on the left-hand side of the bonnet of that immaculate Mission Impossible fallout supported car. Shea Adam is down there. We have the BMW and the number 911 Porsche coming in for their last stop. They do not have any wheel gun issues, and Nick Tandy clear to leave. New Michelin and a lot of fuel enough to get to the end of the race. And there goes the BMW as well. They put a bit of tape on the bonnet of that car, John. So uh, the BMW, the black one, now has a little bit of weight on it too. Yeah, clearly didn't have the uh, black tape ready for that. So the 24 BMW uh, with the bonnet damage to the left. And it's just popped up uh, under uh, wind. Uh, with the wind pushing it up, the uh, aerodynamic effect. It's just popped the rear of that bonnet by the windscreen as it was going into the braking area at the end of the Sam Posey straight. So that was a very odd one. Must have been maybe been some uh, accident damage to that car earlier on in the race. It's now fallen another lap further back and has just had the number 66 second place car of Joey Hand go by. He's trying to stay with it. So a good run from the 24 car, rather spoiled by that. It has been the faster of the two BMWs this weekend. Big slide coming out of the final corner as well as Jesse Kron's really leaning on it. Magnussen by nine seconds over Hand and that's why Hand wanted to get past that BMW to see if he's got anything for Jan Magnussen, four tenths of a second in the favour of Jan Magnussen last time around, but they did. There was a bit of lappery. Jan Magnussen now also riding the curbs in the middle of the uphill chicane and dropping the left-hand side Michelin's over to the back, the left-hand side of that uh, raised red curb. Two wheels on the inside of that trusting that he's got enough ride height not to rip the sump guard out of the car the, or the uh, bottom of the engine. Clearly, they've measured that very carefully. Meantime, at the head of GT Daytona, Madison Snow has a, an extensive lead over Pat Long, but Pat Long's got Andy Lally with a slightly damaged rear end now on that. Magnus, number 44, black and or dark grey and green. Number 44, Magnus Audi. Just trying to chase him down. It's a couple of seconds last time around. Looks like it's about the same now. Patrick Long, 25 seconds away from the Lamborghini that leads GTD. The other two championship contenders 
in GT Daytona. Alvaro Parent and Catherine Legg, fourth position at the moment, so we'll lose ground on the leaders. It's a three-point gap at the head of the field at the moment, and 14 points from the lead. Jerome Blake and Morland and Ben Keating, who won last time out and brought themselves into championship contention, not having such a good day today in the GT3 AMG. No, and I'm not quite sure why, to be honest, because... BMW uh, back in the pits, by the way. The uh, Jesse Curran yeah. car, the bonnet hasn't stayed down on that car. And there was a problem on the uh, last pit stop for number 33 car. I think there must have been, because it's lost a fair bit of ground to the cars it was dicing with. That was the second, wasn't that second and third, pretty much, uh, nose to tail passes there in GTD with 127 laps completed by the uh, leaders in GTD and behind them the 86 about 10 seconds back is the 86 number 15 and Gillen Jeanette after her off earlier on is closing in on that battle for four uh, it's a new bonnet assembly going on to the 24 in an effort to get that car back into the race safely Shea Adam is in the pit lane Dirk Miller, your teammate Joey Hand, just under 10 seconds behind the Corvette. Do you think he can catch up to it if it stays green flag? Well, you know what? It's still a long race and um, the car is awesome. Our 66 crew did a really great job. Um, we worked all weekend um, and the extra practice for, for the race here. We knew it's a tire race. It's going to be a tire race. I was sitting behind, um, you know, the forker in the beginning. I could manage my... my there actually and could save some fuel and uh, right now it's just sitting there and um, trying to maintain um, the gap maybe closing the gap a little bit it's dependent on traffic but uh, cross fingers I mean we need to catch up and we need we need to fight I mean championship is around the corner so um, every point counts at this point here well fighting against them for sure but it also helps to be ahead of the 67 that puts you a little bit further up in the GTLM points a yellow would really help though well a yellow would help at the other point you know you never know what a yellow is bringing so I rather have it uh, without a yellow and have it a green race and um, we see a good fight on the on the track win here in 2011 good luck today good luck today thanks thanks the jury hand by the way did set the fastest lap of the race uh, Four or five laps to go on lap 128. Nick Tandy's going to take that away from him this time around. 50.99 uh, that was uh, Joey Hand. Still a couple of tenths away from the uh, lap record set last year by Antonio Garcia in the Corvette at a 50.78. 50.834 now by Nick Tandy. And he closes to within 17 seconds of Ryan Briscoe, but that's sixth position for Nick Tandy. And there'll be some frustration, I think in the Porsche GT North America yeah. uh, camp because they have had fast cars. That number 911 though, Jeremy, I'm not sure what, if anything, they did overnight to that car, but it was not the same car in qualifying in the race than we saw yesterday. No, that's right. It was the off this morning for Patrick Peely in that car, which was unexplained. I went around the Porsche team, Porsche team, spoke to a couple of people over there. I didn't really know what had happened, why he'd gone off the road. They it's couldn't not been find the same anything since then. It doesn't seem to have been the same since then. However, uh, you know, it's, it's going, it's flying now because Nick Tandy just set the fastest lap of the race. So uh, I don't know. It's been a curious day for that team, and certainly that pit stop didn't come themselves a glory there. You always have a, you should, should always have a, a spare gun. gun ready to go, rather than having to fish around behind the wall for it. A couple of people commenting on the the way the angle of the fuel hose goes in and where the fuel is starts. It might be better to have a left-handed tyre changer on that right front tyre because the poor tyre changer was battling against where the fuel holes was. The car was pretty close to the wall as well. That might have been a contributing factor. All these little things look like small things, but they add up. 36 minutes to go. Checkered flag then in 37 or 38 minutes time. No more than that. And don't forget, though, the checkered flag ends the race. It only is the start of the discussion coming after the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for the Northeast Grand Prix is Michelin Post Race Tech. That's where we hand the agenda over to you, our audience, on RS2 IMSA Radio around the US and around the world. Let's get your questions, comments, points arising, or just observations in at Michelin 
PRT, excuse me, hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio on Twitter, please, yeah. as quick as you can for that. The observation right now, by the way, is that uh, number 66 continues to fly. Oh, yeah. And uh, the gap has come down by another second on that last lap. I it have. Was, uh, it was 9.9 .9 seconds on lap 132, 9.7, 8.4, 6.8, 5.8. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on that one. It was 10 seconds when Shea was took to Dirk Muller, and now it's five. Indeed. Now, I'm going to make two observations myself about that, Jeremy. Uh, I thought it sounded to me as though the Ford guys were a little more confident about where their tyres might be at the end of the race, as opposed to the Corvette. Um, they've got tyres that are 10 laps newer anyway, the 66 to the 3. And that also means if there's any question on fuel, it will only be on the three car. And I still think that at nearly an hour and four minutes, when Jan Magnussen pulled out, that they might not be on the fumes, but they are going to be struggling a wee bit. Also struggling at the moment, number 58 in third place. Pat Long is struggling with the back end of the Porsche. A right motorsport car has been brilliant all this weekend but Pat's been struggling on this last set of tyres and at the moment he's struggling for rear grip on turning and on throttle application and Andy Lally is basically looking at the back as what he will see as a wounded animal at the moment Big Bend is the place where Pat is particularly having problem at also getting out of the downhill as well gets it turned in nicely there well Pat modifying his line there that's the mark of a great racing driver but just struggling a wee bit to get the car slowed down and turned into the big bend see that was a problem that Earl Bamba was having earlier on as well in GTD Madison Snow by 26 seconds from Pat Long and Andy Lally battling for second place on the podium another 11 seconds further back is Alvaro Parent in the 86 Acura then it's farm backer right up the tailpipes there that is a battle for championship position as well there between parent and farm backer 86 and 15 Acura and lexus and good at jeanette's right there as well making it a trio of cars battling for yeah fourth fifth and sixth in gtd that is right number 33 cars trying to stay ahead of the 48 car so he doesn't go a lap down in case there is a full course caution that's the, yeah, Blake Morlin in the Riley Technologies run car. Yeah, Pat is really, really struggling in the right motorsport car to get through the middle and out of the big bend. And Lally is right there again. Just wonder if he might even have a slow puncture on the right rear of that car. There's something not happening correctly for that machine the right machine is all wrong in turn one and club is the curb through the uphill and that's cost him momentum and Andy Lally will try and get alongside into the West Bend but can't do it has the race leader chasing them both down at the moment with just over 30 minutes to go remember our Porsche keys to the race tyre strategy and having something at the end of the race all important here comes Jan Magnussen to get in between those two cars battling for second in GT Daytona and that gives a little bit of respite to Pat Long. Just for a corner or two, Andy Lally couldn't be all over the back of him. Pat Long, he's really fighting that 58 car and he's got no grip coming out of the medium speed corners. Will he let the Corvette through into the chicane? He might have to, and he's pushed him offline, and that's going to be a problem. And here comes Lally, has more momentum, has more speed, goes to driver's right, but Pat takes the apex up into the West Bend area. There's no overlap there, and Andy Lally thinks better and drops a car's length or two behind as he positions himself for a run through the final corner and onto the Sam Posey straight. Great battling for second position all the while, though Madison Snow is driving away from these two. And now it's 27 seconds. The gap as Nick Tandy is going through there. He's a lap down, but only just a lap down and lapping a wee bit quicker than Jan Magnussen. So 
Tandy at the moment on a mission to get back to the yellow car ahead of him and get back on the lead lap. He only changed his tyres some 20 laps ago, less than that. So he's got way newer Michelins on that car and he's catching up with the leader and potentially getting back on the lead lap here. The battle for second in GTD at West Bend. Far side of the circuit for us. Through comes the number 66, Joey Hunt. He's second in the race. Now he will want to dispose of these two as quickly as possible, but the GT3, the GT Daytona cars is quick in a straight line. And the Ford's gonna have to come from a long way back and can't do it. But Pat Long goes wide and here comes Andy Lally down the inside, takes the Ford back and goes side by side. These two are battling for position. Oh! And Joey Hand hits the 44 and a fabulous save by Andy Lally, the same corner that was dunched before. And I'm sure Joey Hand is uh, somewhat disappointed, but he is in the battle for second place here in GTD. And Andy Lally's trying to make the pass. Big sideways moment. I'm sure that the race control guys will be looking at that. It didn't result in an accident, but there was avoidable contact there. Joey Hahn getting frustrated, I think, Jeremy, by being repassed by a GTD car. And he's going to have to come from a long way back here, but he's done it. He's got down the inside, and here comes Lally. Can he squeeze through the gap that the Ford has made? Not quite. And now Pat Long's going to have to stand Lally up in the left-hander, which he does. That's smart. But it's getting out of the next right-hander on the no-name straight that the 58 car's been struggling with. We talked about it earlier on, Don, right at the beginning, John, didn't we? The fact that the corner, the mid-cornering speed of the GTD cars is pretty much the same yes. as the as the uh, GTLM cars. That was a perfect example of it right there. Well, Andy Lally, Lally was quicker, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, Andy Lally he was quicker and made the pass, but uh, it was uh, it was pretty tight down there. But all of a sudden, that gap that had come down from 10 seconds to three is now out to, uh, well, over seven last time. And here comes Andy Lally now across the line the gap is eight seconds once again so you know number three car the race leader had a little bit of difficulty getting past that group and now uh joey hand has had the same he's and he's lost that ground he has made that he had made up well andy lally was back past the ford and the ford just nails the back of the uh audi uh, in some ways fortunate enough for andy lally that the left hand rear corner was knocked off early on by a bmw so it actually was just up against the tyre, but you'd worry about any damage that was done there. Fabulous save, fast hands Lally works again. Because <laughs> yeah. he caught that without really losing too much ground. Yeah, that's right, because uh, the, the number 66 car, Joey Andy, tried to go around the outside of the Porsche, and that line was kind of blocked off, wasn't it? So Andy said, okay, fine, I'll get back here on the inside. And yeah, it was, uh, you yeah, know, Andy was, he, he's, trying to get, he's trying to get past Patrick Long, so he's going to do everything he can second to do that. Place. This is second Absolutely place. right. He, he finished third last week, uh, last time out. And, and that was and a late race charge as well, Jeremy. Was. So again, what we're seeing here from our he's Porsche. Right there, look at this. He's having a go this time through Big Bend, and I don't think Pat's going to be able to hold on to it. No, he can't. He's around the outside of the left-hander. I am impressed. That's very impressed. He's used the banking there. Pat Long just dropped the left hand. Conti's off the racing circuit for a moment. And that additional loss of grip and forward drive was all that Lally needed, but that was a very aggressive but impressive move from Lally. He's been setting that up for a few laps. Pat Long then, third position. Our Porsche keys to the race was tyre strategy. And who had the grip at the end of the race? We've still got 27 minutes left of this race. The mid-engined Audi and the mid-engined Lambo are at the front. The tyre debris offline is huge now. And trying yeah. to give any room to anybody, you are going to get clag on your tyres. You are. And that's another thing we talked about, the fact that uh, there is going to be rubber build-up, particularly at the, uh, the chicane, uh, but also on that infield section as well, the kind of the S's after Big Bend. Number 33 car, by the way, he still doesn't want to lose that lap, does no. he? A German Blecker ball, and he's at the tail end of the lead lap in the seventh position. He's pushing very, very hard and maintaining uh, his, his, his position ahead of the number 48 car on the road. 
mentioned Nick Tandy as well. He must be very close now to Jan Magnussen because he's been taking half a second and more out of the leader every lap, and he's trying to get his lap back in sixth position in GTLM, so I'll need to see them the next time that they go through. There was Earl Bamba going past me. Now there is the number four of Ollie Gavin rumbling past me. Meantime, the battle's going in GT Daytona. Gunnar Jeanette is with Mario Farmbacker, and just ahead, Alvaro Parent, and just ahead, Pat Long, who is struggling. I think Pat Long might have to pit. I don't think he's going to get to the end on those tyres. Whatever they did with the pressures or whatever, uh, I don't think Pat is going to have anything to fight with. Parent is only three and a half seconds behind him and taking chunks of time out of him. Farm back it. And Gunnar Jeanette right there as well. The 63 Ferrari having recovered after going off the track while leading. He's now sitting in sixth position and with fifth and fourth just ahead of him. I'm sure they want to uh, remind you of this, John. Still 25 minutes to uh, go. Well, exactly. <laughs> That's why and, I said I don't think Pat no. is going to get to the end in no. any kind of shape. And, you know, and Joey Hand, I mean, he's charging along again. We talked about the fact that Gat came down to three seconds, went out to eight. It's now under six again. So it's the, uh, the that, that gap is ebbing and flowing as they work their way through the slower cars. Fabulous stuff. This is what multi-class racing, as you would say, is all no, about. No, agreed. It might only be two classes this weekend, yeah. but it's working very well. And Big Tandy is within four car lengths of getting his lap back from Jan Magnussen. They've just gone past us. Now, this is not... It doesn't matter anything for the race. Joey Hans five seconds behind Jan Magnussen. Nick Tandy's about half a second behind him. And the significant part will be, will Magnussen fight him as he goes through towards the uphill right now? Tandy's right with him. So that's the number three Chevy Corvette and the number 911 of Nick Tandy. He's the first car off the lead lap. And he's right with the leader now. And he's been taking time out of Magnussen. 51 won last time for Magnussen in relatively clean air. Let's keep an eye on them the next time they come through. Yeah, they're still together. And there's traffic ahead of them now. Magnussen of 52-1 last time around. Tandy, 52 flat. He's got up to him, but he can't make any ground right now with the gap ahead of him. Joey Hand down to four seconds behind them. And he can almost see them ahead. He can almost... In fact, I think he can, because they're in traffic. Yes, he can. And Hand is coming very quickly indeed took almost three quarters of a second out of the leader last time around. The leader has got Tandy now right with him. And Nick Tandy wants to get his lap back. I'm not sure that Max really wants to fight too hard here yet because he's got to worry about Joey Hand behind in the Ford. But still, as Jeremy's just said, still more than 20 minutes to go here. I've picked way too early. There goes the leader again. Max down the inside into... The first corner as he goes past the number 14 of Kyle Marcelli. And the Porsche's right there. Porsche. Now that's a Porsche that looks much better through turn one than Earl Bamba did earlier on. Here comes Tandy through the left hander onto No Name Straight. He's going to send it up the inside. You know Tandy's going to send it up the inside. Here he comes, he's showing it into the uphill. He showed the nose there. He's seen the Magnuson. Come on, Jan. I'm getting me lap back here. You're not doing any of us any favours here. And either you're going to let me go or I'm going to force the issue. They go past Madison Snow, the leader of GTD. Oh, and that's really caught Tandy up and he's lost a good second, maybe more there. But now it's three wide into the first corner as Jan Magnussen has to go up the inside of Jeroen Blakemolen, who is desperately trying to stay on the lead lap in GTD, and he's lost time now, and here comes Madison Snow. This is enthralling stuff. It's brilliant. With the leaders in both of the categories, one trying to keep a dangerous car off the lead lap, and the other, the GTD, trying to put a dangerous car and a championship rival a full lap down. And here's Joey Hand. Joey Hand has stealthed up behind this lot. 
This could all end in tears yet, Jeremy. Earl Bamba might yet be in Ooh. the box seat. I tell, you, I'm, I'm, I tell you what, I was just watching there, John, was the uh, battle for third place in GTD heading into Big Bend. Four car battle now because Patrick Long, yep. all of a sudden, he Drop slipped back. eight seconds behind Andy Lally. Remember how dominant he was in the early part of the race? And right behind him is Parent. the accurate Parent and Mario Fanbacker and Gunnar Jeanette. I like Gunnar Jeanette's chances here. That uh, WeatherTech Ferrari looks in good shape under Gunnar. And they're going too wide ahead of him. Oh, this could get dangerous as well. This could end up in a heap of carbon fibre and some disappointed drivers. In the big bend, Parent down the inside, has a look for it, can't make it happen. And here comes Jeanette. He drafts past the uh, Lexus of Farnbacker, stays to the inside. He'll compromise his exit just a little bit, but there's a position made up by Gunnar Jeanette, and he's up in the fifth now. Yeah, excellent drive there by Gunnar Jeanette. And number Smart 15 boy. car, yeah, uh, Farnbacker tried to close the door, but it was too late at that stage. Uh, Gunnar Jeanette oh, was already alongside Pat's him. Oh, has gone wide. Oops. His tyres are up absolutely short he's got no grip left there brand new tires at the last pit stop the 58 last in on lap 104 so Perrin actually has all the tires but that uh, Acura using them better in this final stint and this is championship implications the 86 car gaining points here oh and a touch the Ford on Pat Long and that is the number 67 car, Ryan Briscoe, giving Pat Long a little bit more than a love tap. Pat Long's got a pit. He's not going to get 20 minutes out of these tyres. He might as well stick a new set of tyres on and try and charge through, surely. Well, he lose too much crown by doing that, unfortunately. So he's kind of caught behind the, between well, a rock and a hard place. off the stage. lead lap, isn't he? So. He's only going to drop back one position if that. Tell me what, the guy who's flying is Andy Lally. Lally is on a tear yeah, again, he, Jeremy. This he, is exactly what we saw at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Yeah, he's 21 seconds behind uh, Madison Snow, uh, but two laps ago it was 25 seconds. Three laps before that it was 27 seconds. He's taken a full lap and yeah. a full second, a yeah. lap out of Absolutely the leader. He is. Now the problem is there's only about 17 or 18 laps to go and he's 20 odd seconds behind it's not beyond the bounds of possibility of course now meantime in the battle at the front of gtd and in the championship in the gtd drivers madison snow is now right up underneath the rear aerofoil of jerome bleakamoland who i also think is struggling for grip in the number 33 riley AMG Mercedes and is about to put a lap on him. Blake and Morland in seventh position. Question will be how hard does Madison want to try to put that lap on one of his championship contenders? At the moment, he's got more than a 20 second gap. Uh, Joey Hand, by the way, has closed up to within 1.6 seconds of Jan Magnussen. And there's Jan Magnussen, where's Nick Tandy? Tandy's gone through. Tandy has unlapped himself, Jeremy. And now okay. he's only 10 seconds behind Ryan Briscoe. And that would explain. And taking a, lap, a second a lap out of Briscoe now. Yeah, fine, I think that will explain then uh, why on that lap, uh, the gap from first to second came down so much because the race leader had lost a bit of, a bit of time uh, while he was being overtaken by Nick Tandy. Now just a second between Magnussen and hand. Meantime, Alvaro Parent has got Gunnar Jeanette for company. Parent on the podium as it stands with Catherine Legg, second in the championship. Gunnar Jeanette, it's been a while since the WeatherTech car's been on the podium. And Kuma McNeil has brought a raft of talent to drive with him. He's got three co-drivers with him this weekend, only Gunnar Jeanette used, but Alessandro Balzan and Jeff Segal here. Sebring since the last Sally podium. What? 17 seconds car. now from first to second in GTD. Hello. Once again, he's coming down by a second a lap. Yeah. In GTD. Poor oh, Pat Long is nowhere, is he? In the no, oh, Pat Long's going to have to pitch. Here, Adam, surely right are going to bring Pat Long in. He's really struggling now, and he could well drop the car here. 
They have another set of tires on the uh, stands on the non-hot side of the pit wall, so they, they could bring them in. They are not planning to, though. All the crew members are standing down. Meantime, at the lead of the race, it's on. And Joey Hand has target acquired. He's within striking distance. What has Jan Magnussen got left? That car was insanely quick over one lap in the hands of Antonio Garcia. It's not about one lap now, it's about 15, because that's what it's going to take to get to the end of this race. And the gap has come down from well over 10 seconds to nothing at all. Across the line now and down into the first corner, it's four tenths of a second with 160 laps completed. Earl Bamber still sits in third position for Porsche. His lap times are quicker than the leaders. Tandy and Bamba, the two quickest cars. Tandy by far the quickest car on the circuit. But for the problem with that 911 car, they'd have been further up the field. I don't know what was the matter with that car earlier on, but it dropped time. And you've got to say, Earl Bamba, hamstrung by a bad pit stop. He could have been battling with the guys ahead. He's only 18 seconds back. And probably getting on for a third to possibly even a half of that was lost in the pit stop. Well, a second there for Andy Lally, by the way. Well, two very similar cars in terms of philosophy, running gear, both running the V10 engine, mid-mounted, the Lamborghini and the Acura first. Uh, Lamborghini and the Audi, rather, first and second, with the Acura in third. It's all mid-engine cars at the front of GT Daytona at the moment, as the leaders go past the sixth, fifth place uh, Lexus of Mario Farnback at the 15 car. Well, man. Who's your money on now, ladies and gentlemen? Don't forget, we're looking for your comments, observations, points arising. Hashtag how Michelin we, PR. How long do we have for that, John? Yeah, um, I think we better put an extra couple of dollars in the meter. Hashtag. Michelin PRT for Post Race Tech at IMSA Radio, please. You take over the agenda of that show once we've done with the interviews here on RS2 IMSA Radio. Madison Snow out to the 55s all of a sudden now. Yeah. And that car was doing 52s, has done 52s well, in uh, earlier in the race. To be fair, he's... he's uh now, he hasn't gone past Bleaker more yeah. yet. And I just wonder if somebody's going to say to him, you're going to have to go past here. You're going to have to try and put a lap on him. I mean, it's all right at the moment, but if it gets down to... I was going to say, if it gets down to 10 seconds, well, it's down to 13 and a half now. Another seven tenths has just disappeared. Oh, and off goes the leader at the bottom of the downhill. And we have a Ford leading. A rare mistake by Jan Magnussen, just understeered off as he was in traffic. And he's dirtied up his Michelins, that's going to take him a lap or two. The leader off, and through has gone Joey Hand. And he didn't even have to make a big dive there, or a low percentage lunge. Jan Magnussen off wow. on the side of the circuit, expertly gathered the car back up. We've seen very big offs there in the past. Coming down the hill, Traffic, including the uh, 63. That's at West Bend. So it comes through West Bend, underneath the bridge, goes down the inside. Ah, got offline yeah. down the inside and couldn't get the yeah. car stopped. Yeah. And I, just I, ran out of road on the exit. Yeah, and it's slippery offline. You know, we know there's, there's rubber marbles. You can see them on the side of the racetrack. It's, it's very slippery. You get offline there, exactly where you go on those rubber marbles, or just the debris from the tyres that's, uh, that's taken the crude on the side of the racetrack after two, hours, two and a half hours of racing. And that is exactly what happened there for Jan Magnussen. Ah, he'll be annoyed with oh, himself he'll about be that. Kicking himself. The effect of going down the inside there means you turn into that yeah. corner a little bit earlier. And it is so easy, even when you nail the turn in, to run wide. So you've turned in effectively earlier. You've got to moderate your exit speed. And clearly, Jan was very, very aware of the fact that he didn't want to be eaten up down the straight. Here comes Madison Snow, 
He's obviously been listening to us here on IMSA Radio because he's gone past your own Blake and more than now. As it's come down to 12 seconds, the gap between himself and Andy Lally. Now they've pushed the go button with 11 minutes to go. A second a lap, that would have been tight. Lally would have been close. But now he's put Blinker Morland a lap down and between himself and the second place car in class. But Jan Magnussen is fired up and he's back behind Gunnar Jeanette again. And I can see this going horribly wrong. Yeah, but he's four seconds behind Joey Hand, who's just uh, said, I'm out of here, and he's checked out at the front of the field. Well, Joey hit that traffic, the Jeanette and Parent cars at the right time and powered past them down the main Sam Posey straight. And Pui Yan stuck behind them again on tyres, which I think may be slightly past their best. But he can't get past the Ferrari, coming to West Bend again. Needs to get a good run through here, having to feather the throttle as he goes through the middle of the corner. Drags up towards the back of the Ferrari, closing, closing, goes to the right. And makes the dive down the inside. Can he hold the car into the apex? He can. But as Jan Magnussen is only in the middle of Big Bend, the new leader, Joey Hand, is already gone. And out through the left-hander. Just, I mean, slightly offline. Jan has to go down the inside there, but he just can't get enough speed scrubbed off to the apex of the corner and runs all four Michelins onto the dirt. Does very well, actually, to keep the car straight. He knows he's going, he straightens everything up, and he eases the car gently to the left, to the right-hand side, and back onto the road. Any moment of panic there, and he'd have been in the arm core hard. Great excitement down in the Chip Ganassi area of the pit lane as that leading position was rather gifted to them. And meantime, another significant moment was when Madison Snow put a lap finally on Jerome Blake and Morland, sitting behind him for around about 10 minutes and lost uh, a good 10 or 15 seconds to oh. the second place car of Andy Lally. It was a lot longer, time. Than, it was long, longer than 15 minutes. It was uh, probably better part of 45 minutes actually John is a long long time he was sitting there uh, but he's made that move now and uh, he's uh, stabilized that gap he's just gone past to complete that 162 the gap between them was 11.4 last time around it was only 12 seconds a couple of laps ago so it's uh, now 10.8 but it's now only half a second that Andy Lally is pulling closer to Madison Snow rather than a full second or more than it was when he was stuck behind the number 33 car Jan Magnussen is still struggling. 54 and now a 53 second lap. Earl Bamba yeah, well, was well over 12 seconds back. It's now down to eight. Yeah, that's battle exactly for second right. Second position. He's going to have to watch his mirrors. I mean, you know, when he ran off wide there and onto the onto the dirt as well, that would have picked up a Scruffing lot of debris on the tires, tires. Yeah. and he'd be struggling now with the grip with the uh, level of grip on the track to uh, to get that uh, excess rubber off the tires and pick up speed again. He's just he's lost those tires. If, if, effectively the way that perhaps to put it. So inside eight minutes now. As the laps are winding down with the time. Joey Hand leads and is pulling away over nine seconds now. The chance of the win, I fear, has gone for Corvette Racing. Under seven and a half seconds, the gap back to Bamba. A better lap by Jan Magnussen there. 52-6, but Bamba is still quicker. 51-9. Nick Tandy is closed right up as well on fifth position. So the two Porsches at the end of the race are looking stronger. Brian Briscoe is the target for the 9-1-1 as the 9-1-2 has to pick its way past a couple of cars fighting posi for position. It's Alvaro Parent and Gunnar Jeanette. Already past Jeanette. Earl Bamba doesn't want to be held up. He knows that Magnussen might be struggling ahead of him, coming down to the diving turn at the end of the lap, the downhill. The 86 is quick in a straight line, the Acura. But Earl Bamba's already made his move to the right-hand side of the track. Back up to nine. No. 
8.3 seconds, so he lost a bit of time there, a full second, as he was getting past those two cars. But now he's got a good gap ahead of him to get his head down and see what he can do. Nick Tandy now within a second of fifth position. Ryan Briscoe in the 67 Ford will be looking over his shoulder. Eight tenths of a second as they went past us last time around. 9-1-1 closing on 67. And it's another day of what ifs for Porsche. They've had good pace in that car, but not at the right times of the race, and they've made mistakes. In GT Daytona, 11.1 seconds. The gap has stabilized. Madison Snow has lost no more time in the last few seconds, last few laps, should I say. Right. He's done exactly what he needed to yeah. do, and he's still got Jerome Blake and and of course, between himself and Andy Lally. He has, John, he's managed that absolutely perfectly. Didn't get, didn't, certainly didn't appear to get flustered. Finally made the move when he had to. But here's that, but this is the battle we're watching here with number 86 and number 63 Ferrari. That is the battle for third position now. They pulled away a little bit from Mario Farbacher over the last few laps. Once again, that Lexus toward the end of the stint, kind of running out of tires. And now just five minutes remaining. Tandy right with Briscoe. As they went past us, there was barely a car's length. And that 67 car, remember, is the points leader coming in here this weekend. They're staring fifth place points in the face. It might be sixth with Tandy on full attack mode. And his dander is definitely up as this battle for third place in, excuse me, second place. Third place in GTD and wide. The, the Acura has got a little bit wide and they're side by side coming out of Big Bend. The white Ferrari tries to cut back on the inside. Oh, beautiful move by Gunnar Jeanette. Had to lay some continental rubber on the ground and slides through with a dab of Oppo. That was marvellous stuff. Gunnar Jeanette will like to see that one over and over and over again. And Alvaro Perez will hate to see it. Thought he'd done enough to cover. But a dab of power from the Ferrari, a little slide. Both of them now struggling for grip with under four minutes to go. Meantime, fifth position going through the uphill. And Tandy's right there with the Ford. Looks to the inside, shows the nose to Ryan Briscoe. Richard Westbrook started that car early on. Thought they might have been going for a fuel run. I think they changed their minds part of the way through. And here comes Tandy, gets a great run off the final corner, just runs on, starts flashing the lights. Hey, uh, Ryan, I'm here. Hello, Ryan, I'm here. Yes, Nick, I know you're there, but you're not close enough to have a little go yet. So stop flashing your lights, you mentalist. Oh, big slide by the Ford. Everybody struggling now. Nick Tandy has been a devotee of short track racing, started his career on short track racing in the UK. His ambition is to go and race a stock car race here in the States. This is the closest he gets to it, albeit a right-handed oval, almost. And he's putting pressure on again. Briscoe's having to defend. They've got traffic. Three laps, maybe four to go. Hand by 10 seconds, Earl Bamba within five seconds of second place. The Porsches coming on strong. Oh, this has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We've had two and a half hours of green flag racing. We've got two or three laps to go. Uh, it's the BMW that's uh, in front of them and he's got no grip at all. The 25 car has been struggling for a while. Alex Simpson, there's three wide. I can't believe it, going through the left-hander. Tandy goes one way, then the other. Now on the no-name straight, Tandy's down the inside. He's got position. He's had to put two Michelins on the grass, but he's in the right place for the braking area for the uphill. They almost touch, they do touch. No, I'm not sure, but Tandy's through. Tandy is through. He had the inside position there. He got it early. That was aggressive, decisive. And our points championship leader, Championship points leader is down to sixth position, Jeremy. Yeah, and I had to, I had to uh, bring up the blood pressure even more. But the battle, there was a battle developing also now for a second and third, perhaps. We're going to have to oh, keep Bamba's an eye on steaming. that. 
Yeah, he's absolutely right. Bamber is absolutely now he's within three seconds of the Corvette of Jan Magnussen. Our Porsche keys to the race, tyre strategy, and Jan Magnussen's been struggling for a while. He lost two seconds the last time around to Earl Bamber. There might have been a bit of traffic in that as well. This was great driving by both of them. Was there a little touch? There was a little touch. The 67. Just running out of road on the right-hand side. Tandy comes down the inside. Oh, that's marginal, marginal. But what do you do? The guys on the inside look to me as though there might have been a little jink to the left from the Porsche. I can see that being called either way or being called not at all. Who'd be in race control? Not me. Jesus. Patrick Long has fallen to last. He's fallen behind yeah. Karl Marcelli now. Told you, should have pitted. Honestly, should have pitted half an hour ago. Shea just telling me she thinks they may have a gearbox problem on that car. Yeah, it's White good. flag! White flag is out! Thank goodness. First and second, almost together. A first and... Uh, first and first on the track is what I'm trying to say, if I can get my head right. Our two leaders in class together. The 48 championship leading Lamborghini is 10 or 15 cars lengths behind Joey Hand, who's cruising now. Hand has lifted off on this last lap. How close is he on fuel? He can't be. Not a problem. The two pit boxes of the leaders in GTD and GTLM are right together, and Shea Adam is there. You'll hear the cheers as they go across the line. How close is Bamba? Not close enough is the answer. It's going to be second for Chevy Corvette, but Ford wins it. And through goes about 15 or 20 car lengths behind goes our GTD winner as well. Shea Adam is with the two successful teams. Which one would you like to hear from first, John? Don't because care. I, I can turn left or right. You, you decide. All right, I will go and try and find Dirk Mueller because I just saw that dude and he's a happy guy and uh, he's always fun to chat with. So let's see, there's Dirk. Overall winner, Dirk Mueller. Congratulations. Not only did he catch the Corvette, he passed him and then he ran away. You're shaking. How good does this win feel? Well, that win is uh, truly win from the whole team, the 66 Ford Chip Ganesi Racing. I told you, like, you know, 40 minutes ago, we, we had a good race car. We worked so much for the race car. We did so many changes, even to the race, from qualifying to the race, and uh, it paid off. Thanks to everybody, that was awesome. I'm still shaking you. It was awesome, and you're likely going to be the new GTLM points leaders, too, so congrats on that. Awesome, thanks so much. No, it's, you know, it's, that's how strong the team is, you know. We're always looking forward, and um, we came here, we, we didn't know that we were you know, that kind of strong. We knew it, maybe a podium is possible, but you know, everything in the modern time is possible, so uh, we're really happy, thanks. That's IMSA racing for you, my friend, congrats. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can go find Brian Sellers now, because uh, that's not a very far walk away. Oh, Share yeah. the first oh, yeah. thing that the 66 has done wrong is take the checkered flag twice. No, they didn't. Yes, they have. Oh, man. They've well, gone through for a second lap of honor and picking <laughs> up more, pick up on the tires. Well, Let's see if we can hear from Brian Sellers. Can you blame Joey Hand? He, he took the checkered flag twice. He's that excited. But for, for you, Brian, last year you got out of the car. You said a word I'm not going to repeat on radio because you were so close to getting the win. This year, it was dominant. This is a way to think. you know it's it's just a big moment for us it's really good um, <clears throat> Madison drove fantastic that fast but was really good over the stent and that's all we worked on and um, we were able to do it today so once we got in clean air we could run the same pace uh, for the whole time we had much less tire degradation than the others and um, but oh man Lally was coming fast and so uh you know all in all really really great um i'm sorry i'm babbling i don't know what to say i'm just really happy you should be really happy and to remind everyone this car had a brand new engine after uh practice one yesterday so great job by the entire crew further extends the championship points leader second win of the year though that's got to be the best feeling uh, it, it is i mean they're so hard to come by they're so hard to come by so you know when you get the opportunities you you 
have to take advantage of them. And this morning, I wasn't sure if we had a chance to win. I knew we had a good race car. Um, but when the opportunity opened up, then you, you have no choice but to try and convert them. And uh, I want to say thanks to Paul Miller, all our guys, for all their hard work over the past couple of weeks. And uh, before we go, I want to say thanks to the fans at Lime Rock for coming out. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, the reward has been two fantastic races today. I thought the Conti was exciting. <laughs> My yeah. goodness me. Two and a half hours of green flag racing on the shortest and one of the fastest tracks we go to. Jeremy has once again showed that green flag racing does give us good racing. That was outstanding. I, I, I honestly, I don't think I've taken a breath for an hour yeah, and a half, a no. full breath. It's been outstanding. Yeah, I mean, we went we went green the whole way, didn't we? After that uh, early caution period on the first lap, the incident on the first lap, it was green the whole way. And what a fight it was. I mean, just a great effort by Ford Chip Ganassi Racing, Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller. They come away with the victory here. And as Shay alluded to, they do can take the championship lead. They came in third place in the points. And they were they were eight behind the le their leaders, their teammates Richard Rispin and Ryan Briscoe. But now I reckon unofficially, Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller will have 208 points. Jan Magnussen and Antonio Garcia 207, and Richard Westbrook and, Re and Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe 206. So one point between first and second, one more between second and third. Michelin post race tech to come. We'll have a few more interviews if we can before. We wrap up here on the PA system. Uh, RS2 IMSA Radio will continue. Big hugs for Madison Snow from Brian Sellers and big smiles too. And they deserve all of that. I don't know if you're still there, Shea, but you can probably get a quick word with Madison. Uh, he's with his teammate. And Andy Lally is the first guy over to congratulate the winners because he's a class act, isn't he? He really is, Shea. He really, really is. I'm not at all surprised to see that Andy was uh, the first one to come over here. Madison's going to need a lot of water tonight. That was a long stint for him. Dude, congratulations. How hard were you pushing through that last stint? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, definitely pushing to stay ahead of everybody. It's like no gap is a big enough gap to make you feel comfortable. <laughs> it's always like, you know, one small mistake, one person passing you and just like, you know, that second it takes, you feel like a little bit and you can be right back down to that second place person. So you're pushing every last minute, every last second. <laughs> It looked like you were pretty happy to sit behind Bleak Mullen and not pass and put him a lap down. We're, no, not at all. I'm not very happy. I mean, I couldn't get her, I couldn't get past Bleak Mullen. I mean, he was fast out there. I'm, I mean, if it was for race, I mean, if we were racing for position, I would have tried to race a little bit harder. But at the same time, I mean, you can't you can't push anybody, and you got to stay safe out there. Hey, ultimately, you did pass him. You did win the <laughs> race. So congratulations. Go celebrate with Brian. Thank you. Awesome stuff, yeah, got past him when it came down to about uh, 10 or 11 seconds. Uh, absolutely extraordinary stuff out at the front of the both classes there this weekend. Uh, Shea, a, a couple of questions that I would like you to start trying to sniff down. The 58 car lost a lot of pace. You thought it might have been gearbox if we can get to the bottom of that place for Michelin Post Race Tech. There's a lot of questions coming in. Uh, about that car that would be good and also the 33 car uh, finished off the uh, the lap the Mercedes of Jerome Blake and Mullen after Ben Keaton did a very good opening lap I seem to think they might have had a little bump somewhere along the line so maybe if you can find out there some final thoughts from you Shea before we hand the PA back for the formalities although we will continue on uh, IMSA radio of course and on the stream Ford making a statement. Three wins in a row by that manufacturer since they came back to the U.S. Third, it was a third place for them over there for uh, Joey, Dirk, and Seb. But uh, this is a very good feeling for Joey and Dirk because they are heading to our next track, Road America, which is their second, or they've gotten two wins over the last two years there. So uh, they'll be feeling pretty good. Yeah, great stuff uh, from the guys at Ford worked hard I just I said to I said when uh, Shea had done that interview with Dirk Muller there was a quiet confidence about where they were in their tires and something they'd seen now you know how hard it would have been to get past uh, Jan Magnussen if he yeah. hadn't run off the circuit ifs and ands but uh, that would have been a, an interesting battle to say the least but as soon as uh, Joey Han got by he was gone yeah he was uh, you know once uh, 
Jan Magnussen had picked up all that debris on his tyres. He was just kind of a sitting duck there. We knew it was going to be a struggle for the drivers towards the end of each of their stints, and it was a big problem there after running wide and picking up all those marbles on his tyres. Feel sorry for Recorvet Racing because they've done a fantastic job this weekend, but uh, hats off to Ford Chip Ganassi Racing for pulling off that win. And you know, Joey Hand, uh, I'm sure he and, uh, and Dirk Mueller, they would have... Uh, probably prefer to have a, you know, a, a, a head-on battle there for the lead in the closing stages. Closing stages. No, I lie. Uh, Joey <laughs> Hand uh, knew how difficult it would have been to get past Yang Mountain in a straight fight, and unfortunately it was a mistake from Jan there that gifted him the win, but it was a great performance by both of those two teams. Yeah, Dirk Muller with a big smile on his face, and Dirk Muller for so long associated with BMW, uh, BMW disappointing oh, race. I mean, yeah, both of them indeed. Yeah, picked up by Ford at the early part of the GT program, and two very, very experienced drivers have driven that program on along with their teammates in the 67 Richard Breastbrook and uh, Ryan Briscoe. And uh, that is a program that, although that might be coming to its end, of course, that Ford GT program, uh, that has borne fruit and looks like they're having another fantastic season and don't forget see if you're here at the track get down to the victory circle just at the back of the podium get up on the hillside there and cheer our champions uh Shea adam thank you very much indeed our continental tire pit lane reporter we're Shea's gonna whip to the podium for some michelin post race tech uh, interviews it's been a very short sharp visit to lime rock park we love coming here and from Skip Barber and everybody at the sharp end of the organization here in Connecticut, they've once again put on a fabulous event. The aficionados of sports car and endurance racing have come out in force on Friday and here on Saturday to make it another real occasion. It's really a very special place for sports car racing here and long may we continue to bring IMSA racing to it. Jeremy Shaw, some final thoughts for our main audience here at the circuit and worldwide. Yeah, thanks for joining us. It's been a brilliant weekend of racing uh, and uh, just just a, a, a tremendous contest all the way through. Hats off to all of the, the winners here, all the podium finishers did a great job. Well done to Gunnar Jeanette there for coming, coming back for third place for WeatherTech yeah, Racing very good. In, that, in that Ferrari after the off earlier on. Uh, and Cooper McNeil for his first stint, which was outstanding. So there's a lot of people holding their heads very, very high leaving here from Lime Rock Park. We've got some great tracks like Lime Rock Park here on the schedule. We go to another one in a couple of weeks' time. From the shortest track on the schedule to the longest, just over four miles. America's National Park of Speed is our next venue. We're off to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Yes, it's Road America. The prototypes are back, and we've got a slightly longer weekend, which also will have next year's schedule announcement as scott atherton unveils the state of the series we'll take that live here on imsa radio my thanks to the technical crew here on site and under keith d'alessandro up at charlotte for Shea adam and jeremy shaw for the pa and our streaming video thanks for being with us stay with us on rs2 and xm sirius for michelin post race tech which comes up, we're handing over the agenda to you. Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio. The checkered flag was a few moments ago. The conversation is about to get hot and heavy as we say goodbye from Lime Rock Park and the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Bye-bye.